So how do I change it so the chat on YouTube doesn't appear? Jane.
Can you, no. Courtney, are you there? I want to test. That. I'm here. So you can hear my, so my video isn't coming on. Is that because you're not letting it come on or is something? No, you can put it on yourself. I don't even have the option though to okay. let, to start your video though. Yeah, it's saying it's unable to detect. I'm here. I'm here. So Janet, just so you know, I'm not going to let people in who aren't board members until about five minutes to set to six because I'm we're still trying to get make sure you guys are all set before we start with anybody. Yes, that's fine. Okay. All right, let me try. And we are live streaming to YouTube. I just tested it out um, with Mia, so people can watch from home. So that's good. Oh boy. I just got my video working, Jan uh, Janet. It didn't work. All right, and you're just uh, clicking on the- Start video on the bottom left. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> well, let me see, I can pop, go to my laptop, which I don't want to, but I will. Boy, I was so proud. I thought I got this all figured out. Sometimes um, you just have to log out of the meeting and log back in. You know what? I was just gonna do that. All right, let me try that quickly. How do I get out? Leave meeting. Okay. Comfortable. Well, it's kind of all we got. I can make money mac and cheese. I can make you the right food to eat. That's really good at the state. Um, and then, uh, yogurt or banana? Yeah, yeah. You want banana in it? Yeah, just yogurt. Violet has quite the chef over there, Mike. <laughs> Oh, you hear that? <laughs> yeah, they're cooking downstairs. I didn't think it was loud enough to hear it through the microphone here. No, yeah, I love it. They're cooking. 
The candidate's video is still not showing up. Um, I don't see you, Courtney, but you're usually not. Yeah, I probably won't. My, my goal tonight is to only have the videos of the select board showing. And then when people are recognized to speak, I will start their video if they have that capability. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Janet, which um, device are you using for your meeting right now? Which what device? Which device are you using? I am now switching over to my laptop. Okay. But uh, Okay, so do, yeah. Actually, I will, um, I'll get out of this because I think it might, let me get that. Okay. It says, wait, your, your meeting host will let you in soon. I'm letting you in right now. Okay. There we go. Okay, test speaker microphone. Yes. And you can hear me, yes? I can hear you, yep. Okay. So Okay, click out of that, start video. There we go. There I am. All right, there you are. Okay, I'm gonna... Um, but, okay, I've gotta set myself up better. Okay. Go ahead, what, Courtney? There's a couple people in the waiting room who don't have full names, so I'm gonna try and let them in and I'm gonna rename them as they come in. So hopefully by the time we're ready to start, everybody's in, their full name okay. is on the screen and we know who's who. Thank you. Yep. to full screen.
Hey, Justina. Hi, Justina. Hi, Janet and Mike. And Kathleen. <laughs> Hi, Justina and Kathleen and Mike. It's Helen. Can you see me yet? Don't see your picture yet. Well, damn it. Well, give it give it a moment. I see your picture, Helen. Oh, now it's gone. There okay. you are. You're not aiming it at your face, though. I'm not aiming it at my face. Well, yeah, I am. Gallery view, hold on. Well, there's my face. Oh, can we please have my full name on here? I just uh, Helen. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to rename like 50 people, so I'm, I'm working on everybody. Okay, Courtney. Thank you. My initials will do. Thank you. If you have joined the meeting and your full name is not represented as your participant name, please change it now. I've gone through and changed a few people, but there's a Carolyn, a Jane, um, and a Rebecca who's on. Thank you. Okay. Did you make me Mary Ellen Manning? I wasn't sure who it was, so who are you? Uh, Mary Ellen Regis. Okay, sorry about that. That's all right. So why? I don't have the time in front of me. Anybody have the time? 556. Okay. Why isn't it on my screen? This is the first time. Hmm. Um, Janet, it's probably because I have the screen sharing on and it's full screen. Okay. And I'm just going to remind participants quick um, while everybody's coming in still and Janet will repeat this that you need to use the raise hand feature tonight there will not be the option for you to unmute yourself. So if you wish to be heard, you need to use the raise hand button which if you click participants. There is a button as the raise hand feature and if you're dialing in by phone, it is star nine. And there's a David who is on. Um, I don't want to make any assumptions as to which David that might be. So if you could either uh, rename yourself or let me know, I can rename you.
Um, would the person who joined by the phone number uh, 401, would you please state your name so I can rename you? Um, <clears throat> Patrick Casey. All right, thank you. Were you talking? Okay, talk. Can you talk now? Yes. Okay, we can hear you. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Janet, if you can mute the other thing that you're calling in on, if it's your phone or whatever, because. I got to get out of my computer. <laughs> All right, now can you hear me? Yep, that's perfect. So, uh, so glad I start a half hour ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it is uh, six o'clock on April 28th, and I will begin the uh, uh, meeting of the Wellseed Select Board. Uh, obviously, this is on Zoom meeting. Um, we'll open the session with. Um, uh, Right now, I'm all discombobulated. Uh, announcements, and please remember that um, no announcements can be discussed. And I'll open that up to the board first. Anybody have any announcements? Yep, Kathleen does, so I'll unmute her. Okay, there we go. Uh, good evening, Wellfleet. Welcome to our first YouTube. Um, I just want to mention that um, the select board meeting on Tuesday, May the 12th, is going to be at a new start time. That'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, just wanted to mention that time change. Um, if that's okay with you, Madam Chair, that's all I have. Yes, thank you. Anyone else on the board? Um, I believe Helen, oh, Helen had something, one second, Helen, and then Dan. Unmuted. You know, I have you're muted. good, Helen, you're good. Yeah, okay, I want to thank Manny Smith for all his service on the, oh, geez, the, what is it, please, the. Taxation Aid Committee. Thank you very much. Um, he sent us his formal resignation, and he has done so so much good work for the town and participated in so many ways that have been helpful. The second thing is I'm gonna announce again what I did last week. Tick season is in full swing. Hillary, our health conservation agent brought it up again at the meeting this morning, the EMT meeting, the emergency management meeting. And I would like, I think it would be a good idea to put it also on the homepage along with the COVID stuff, because this is a, we have many different tick diseases <coughs> and people need to know that they can get those ticks tested for free here. Thank you. Okay, and then Dan Hort. Hi everybody. Um, just a reminder for anybody who wasn't on the call this morning, um, we are looking at postponing amnesty day to sometime in the fall. Uh, the Board of Health, the health agent and the D Department of Public Works are working on when we might be able to have amnesty day sometime in the fall. 
The other thing uh, that came up this morning was um, a number of people have asked about when they'll be able to take yard waste and brush to the transfer station. So the, the staff at the transfer station is working now so that we can get it set up so everybody can bring their recycling to the transfer station. They've got that almost done. Their next step will be to work on, on getting the area prepared for yard waste. So I don't have an exact day or time for that yet, but please know that they are working on it. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, any announcements um, from the audience? Um, I'm not seeing any hands raised here, Jana. And again, if you want to speak, you need to use the raise hand button under participants or if dialing in by phone, star nine. Okay, so to begin this meeting, I'll reiterate, reiterate possibly what um, Courtney has said um, to make these meetings work a little better. We're still getting used to them. Uh, keep your phone muted at all times when not talking. Do not use speakerphone, Bluetooth devices, mute background noise. Uh, please do not speak until the chair or the meeting moderator, Courtney, asks for public comment or questions. The board will discuss first. Uh, you need to raise your virtual hand by the raise hand button. And um, after the board has spoken, it will be open to the public. Uh, I would like the board, even when we speak, not just vote, but that the board, when they want to speak, go also in seniority order so you know when you're uh, being acknowledged. Um, everybody has to have their full name if they want to be recognized. And uh, I think that's about it for tonight. Um, and just make sure you speak up and speak clearly. Um, there's a couple of people who are talking a little low, so that's just a reminder. Yes, and if you look down at your notes like I do sometimes, um, remember to look up and speak into the mic. Okay, so um, um, anything else? Looks like Helen has her hand up. Yes, one more thing. Um, just in the same way that videos of our meetings and other meetings often were available on the town website in the Wellfleet Town Media section. Audio recordings of these meetings are also available there. And actually the audio has now gotten really good. Thank you. All right, moving on, uh, we'll start by the COVID-19 update. Uh, and it will start with recommendations from the emergency management team. Uh, and we're gonna have other recommendations before we start with White Crest Beach. Is there anything else from this morning's conversation besides uh, the um, transfer station? Uh, Mr. Hort. Um, I was gonna speak to the two that are on the agenda. Uh, Chief Polly, I see you're on the phone. Do you have anything that you wanna bring up from this morning's meeting? You're uh, unmuted, Polly. Chief Polly here. I, I don't at this time, thank you. Um, We'll just take it uh, off the agenda. Okay. All right. So, uh, anyone else? Uh, so, Chief what Early I would then. like to, if I can speak, this is Dan Hort. What I would like to say is obviously, everybody knows we're in a very fluid situation. Um, just this morning, after the emergency management team held their public call, uh, Governor Baker extended the stay at home order until May the 18th. Um, he has appointed a task force to start to address uh, the reopening of the economy in the state of Massachusetts. But as someone pointed out, that task force is to report to him on, I think, on the 18th or 19th. So it's not likely once the 18th has passed that we're going to see an immediate, however graduated or phased, opening to the economy. So we're following a lot of his, his recommendations. And then uh, the emergency management team is also looking at what do we have to do that's well fleet specific. And those that's where the two reservation or the two recommendations come to you this evening. Um, the recommendation to close White Crest Beach parking lot, the main lot for the summer, was made in order to limit the number of uh, day trip visitors that we get to Wellfleet. Um, that's really the, the, the purpose there. Um, we want to start to send out the message now that a large group of people at the beach 
on the 4th of July, on Memorial Day, on nice weekends, is not okay this year. And that's the purpose, the reason why we brought that forward to you this evening. Um, I, I did get a comment from somebody that said we weren't being very business friendly. And that, that's somewhat true, but I think the overriding factor that we're taking into account here is really about public safety. And we know everybody's going to suffer this year with, with reduced tourism, uh, the number of visitors to town. We know that's an unfortunate um, result of some of these actions, but our really sole focus is keeping our public, our, our visitors safe and healthy. Thank you. Um, so with the um, recommendation to close Whitecrest Beach, I want to also ask, is, is Suzanne on the line? She is, yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So I want to ask questions because I think that everything has to change or adapt, I'll say adapt. Um, and with that, we're also going to need more monitoring more um and i don't know if uh, just one beach attendant would be good enough we may have to ask the police to send somebody to monitor this uh and i think that any business that wants to open needs to open that they have to have a plan in place such as how are they going to do social distancing uh, are they going to have curbside pickup? How's that going to happen in the summertime when uh, there's more cars possibly? Um, and anybody who has a bit business that they think has a problem to come up with some some solutions that they can suggest to us. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what we've got to do. Almost each business may have to um, be taken individually and I also want to say that um, Airbnb today or yesterday announced that they it's a mandatory 24 hours between rentals. So that's something that's going to have an effect, you know. Um, and I don't know what the story is with rentals. So all of these things, are very, we're very new to it. Um, and um, I understand why uh, Suzanne or the beach department wants to... Uh, close white crest but then that might create more problems and i think we have to be fluid with that too i'm not even sure how but i i want to ask suzanne if she's planning on limiting the number of cars in newcomb and lecount madam chair yes uh number one we're not closing white crest completely we're closing the back lot which is the larger of the two oh, okay. and oh, keeping the op front one open front one being the ocean side one open for stickers only. Okay, didn't know that. All right. <clears throat> That's good to know. Um, so last summer we had 6,496 paid vehicles at Whitecrest Beach and that, which means that we're, we would be limiting uh, the number of bodies on the beach from anywhere between 13,000, which would be two people per vehicle to 26,000 over the course of the summer by not having pay parking at Whitecrest. And that is the basis of the recommendation because we are charged with reducing the density of people in public places for public safety. So what about limiting the number of cars uh, at LeCount's, Newcomb's and also the ponds and mail, like blocking off some of the parking spaces or having the parking attendants saying, uh, you know, 50 cars at a time, 100 cars at a time. I don't really have any number. That's under discussion. And my mm -hmm. uh, thought is to not have any pay parking at Whitecrest as a beginning of the conversation. It's not the end of the conversation, okay. but right. it's the beginning. And I think because this is such a fluid environment and it changes from not only from week to week, from, but from day to day, that we're going yeah. to have to make some decisions on the fly this summer for okay. safety. Good. Yes, I, I totally agree. Um, and I'm glad we're talking. So I know there's concern with the beachcomber um, having, not having 
uh, people being able to park there and come down to their restaurant, especially if they're going to adapt and do uh, social distancing by maybe having to go and having picnic tables spread out far or chairs spread out so people can enjoy a to-go lunch um, without getting close. Um, and I suggested to them that they come up with some alternatives that um, might help or to come up with a plan that might help them or that possibly <clears throat> if they're going to the beachcomber, I'm, I'm talking on the fly, that they can um, use the funk bus from someplace to come, but then there's got to be social distancing on the funk bus. But is are you um, open to hearing any suggestions from them as long as they're good suggestions? There's Suzanne there. Oh, Suzanne, hang on. Go ahead, Suzanne. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, there I am. Okay, truthfully, my concern here is public safety and the safety of my staff. Um, I don't, I am not in a position to decide what will work and what, what will not work for individual private businesses in Wallfleet. It's not my um, area of expertise, uh, but I am truly concerned with reducing the density of bodies on the beaches. Over the 18 months that the parking task force um, existed, one of the statistics that I found interesting was that based on the total number of bodies at Cahoon Hollow versus the total number of bodies allowed in the beachcomber at any one time, it was a very small percentage of all the people who went to Cahoon's who actually were inside the comer being, being customers. So I'm, I'm not sure how that would work under social distancing, but I, uh, am willing to entertain any information that um, people have to put forth on this. However, it's not my responsibility to either foster or not foster a private business. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else from the board have comments? Yep, um, DeVasto, Wilson and Carlson do, so, and Bacon and Hort. So which order do you want me to take in, Madam Chair? We go in, in uh, seniority, which is not by age, but in longevity on the board. So we start with Helen. Just okay. In, uh, yeah, hi. A couple Thank things. You. Suzanne, uh, through you, Madam Chair, to Suzanne, I like very much your specifying density on beaches as opposed to simply numbers of people because the density is the issue. Um, I am against closing any part of Whitecrest for the simple reason that A, we don't know what the other towns on the Outer Cape are doing uh, with their uh, day tripper lots, if they have any. Maybe Suzanne, you can address that right now because you know it off the top of your head. What I mean I, by that is, sorry. wait, let me, let me finish. Um, as I said this morning, I wanna know what the park is doing, what their pay, pay for, you know, come for the day and pay by the day is I want, us to think about everything that's happening on the Outer Cape vis-a-vis -vis day trippers and people are here who are here for a short time. Because for sure, if they can't use a town parking lot, they will find another place to park. And those other places, and this is going to be unenforceable, the beach staffs can't simply be combing through the woods and on all the side roads all the time, all day this summer, certainly. They will just park and get to the water because people have, particularly in this time of anxiety and wanting to break away and wanting to throw off rules, people just want to have fun. They just want to get to the water and if it's hot weather, they really want to get in the water. And I think that we should have as much parking open as we possibly can on every beach. And that's the first thing I wanted to say. And that we need to know what the other towns are doing before we make up our minds about this. Because yes, the situation is fluid, it's changing all the time, 
But if we change our minds about things like that and don't start communicating what it's going to be now and stick to it, there's going to be an awful lot of confusion. And people will simply break the law. And once again, we don't have a way to enforce this. Um, I'm more concerned about the beachcomber and their wonderful music and the performances at night and crowds that listen to them and dance than I am by what goes on during the day there. Um, I was aware of the, you know, the kind of more relaxed use of the premises, shall we say, in terms of density most days. Um, and people do go down to the beach there. But I really think that us telling people they can't come down for the day and not use the state highway, which they can do anytime they want, and not simply freely drive here, because we're not like some countries in the world where you can't do that. People can do that here, and they will come, and they will get to the water, and they will be all over town. And there is nothing we can do to prevent that, except close the beaches, which I don't want to do at this point. So I, I, spoke Thank you. My, I spoke with my cousin in California this weekend, and she said the beaches are all closed. They have barricades again, uh, up on all the parking lots, and they even have barricades on the private secret uh, trails that go down to the beach, and they have posted either police and or park rangers at every spot. So I'm not professing that I'm not I'm just saying what other uh, states are doing and um, just throwing that out there. Uh, I, that's one of my problems with this is you know there's going to have to be more enforcement uh, and actually somebody was getting arrested on the beaches of California for not social distancing. They were being taken away by the police in handcuffs. So I'm hoping that people will respect uh, whatever decisions we make. Um, can if I, I could? Yes, go ahead. Okay, uh, a couple of things. People are going to do what they want to do, well, no matter what rules we have. Um, we do not have set sufficient personnel to enforce a rule that prevents them from A, being too close to one another, or B, parking their vehicles too close to one another, or Anything else, the only thing we have control over is what parking lots we allow people to park at. If the board decides that they do not want to close the back part of Whitecrest and not allow pay parking for the summer, that is totally within your purview. But it's disingenuous to say that and then say you want to have social distancing because you're not going to have both. Either you're going to open it up as regular and it's going to be very crowded in some areas and not so crowded in others, or you're going to do reduce the number by 13 to 26,000 people over the course of the summer and contribute a little to the lack of, you know, the, den the reducing the density on the beach. So I know that this morning's meeting, Kathleen was very um, clear that she had been to LeCounts and the sign was there and people were not social distancing. That's a microcosm of what's going to happen this summer. We are, and there's nothing to enforce. It's a guideline issued by the state. So absent any kind of actual regulation or penalty for failing to observe these guidelines, I don't think we have a chance. I agree with Helen. They're going to do what they want to do. And as I said before, I'm recommending that you close it to pay parking because it will reduce it by that many bodies over the course of the summer. And for what the seashore is doing and the other towns, I've been... Uh, I've been a party to two uh, telephone conference calls. Uh, everybody, uh, as of this previous week, um, the towns were all waiting for guidance from the state, and the seashore was waiting for guidance from Interior, which would be based on President Trump's three-phase re-entry into oh. business plan. So nobody knows what they're doing right now. We have no word from other towns. Oh, anyone else from the board? Uh, Kathleen. Yeah, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to say um, I'm slightly astounded um, 
that's still the amount of denial that's going on with this pandemic. Um, dancing, music, picnics on, on picnic tables. I'm, I'm not sure any of that's gonna happen. Um, so I've, okay. I have a, a brief statement I've written um, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, this is an unprecedented time in the history of our town. At this point in time, we are no different than any other town on Cape Cod going into the 2020 tourist season. We have a moral obligation to protect the health and safety of our residents and non-residents, and with cautious and deliberate decisions, do what it takes to ensure that health and safety. I strongly urge the board to support the closing of Whitecrest Beach parking for the summer season. This will severely impact a significant source of revenue for the town, which is to say it's going to hurt. But in closing the parking area at Whitecrest to day trippers and short-term renters, we will lessen our guest population during the summer, giving us a slight advantage in tamping down the COVID crisis. We will not be the first town to do this, but let us be a town who shows responsibility to our residents and non-resident taxpayers. Hopefully Marconi Beach will remain open for day passes, but come out of the box, do this before Labor Day, or I'm sorry, Memorial Day, and support the emergency management team's recommendation to do this and do it now. Thank you. Can Christina hear me? Yeah, I'm trying to unmute her. Okay. Justina, do you have any Just, comments? Go ahead. Is that okay? Uh, great statement, Kathleen. I agree with the sentiments. I wanted to say the board is not anti-business. The virus is anti-business. And the first principles this summer need to be public safety, need to be looking at public health uh, numbers. We, uh, we're not in control of that, the viruses. So I found Kathleen, uh, Suzanne Thomas's Beach recommendations to be data driven and to be public health driven, which we have to do in this time of virus. And I support them. I thought they were great recommendations. Suzanne, thank you for your courage and putting them forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, you want to unmute Mike? Yep, he's good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just like and would like to respond uh, to Helen and and say that you know uh, limiting parking and limiting density on the beaches, which is really the only way we can do that, is the only way that we can keep the beaches open. Um, we cannot be encouraging um, people to be day tripping down, um, knowing that we have paid day trip parking on the beach, um, at least not for the foreseeable future, but that doesn't mean it can't change. And so I do kind of recommend a closure of that until further notice um, rather than the entire 2020 season, because we don't really know what's ahead of us. I mean, I find it highly unlikely that we would open it, but, um, but I, I think what the important thing is to me that we try to keep the beaches open for the public to use and not be too draconian. Um, that said, I don't think we can keep the beaches open at maximum capacity. And I don't buy for one second that people are not gonna be coming down here when they've been cooped up and in stay at home orders all over the state of Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, but particularly Massachusetts, which is still a hot spot right now. We, we've plateaued, but we're not seeing a decline in Massachusetts. So if people are coming um, and we can't stop them from coming, we only have the tools of discouragement. And one of those mechanisms we have is our parking capacity at the beaches and the fact that we're not potentially, that we're not gonna be selling uh, day trip um, parking. Um, there's going to be obviously issues around Mayo Beach because we don't pay to park there. It's public parking. 
and we'll have to deal with that in some way. Um, but I don't think we should be enticing people. And if other towns, sometimes it takes one town for other towns to follow suit. And so I am in full support of doing this. Um, I'd like the option to be able to open the lot if something does dramatically change. I'm doubtful that that's gonna happen. Um, but, and I just wanna remind people, this is just for the, per, the portion of the parking lot at Whitecrest Beach that's used for um, day passes. Uh, so the other part of the, the beach parking lot on the ocean side would remain open. So I think there, I don't really think we have a choice um, other, to do, other than to do this. And, and we may have to uh, limit the parking capacity at other beaches too, just to make sure that um, the density is not too high. I mean, we've all been to, you know, um, to Newcomb Hollow Beach when it's super crowded and the parking lot's full and uh, there's, it's too crowded, there's too many people, the density is too high. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanna say that as far as businesses go, I know every business that's opening, I think Hillary, our health agent has been in contact with and she's having them um, put forward some sort of plan as to how they can safely reopen and working with them. She's stated that um, in the past. I don't know if she's on the line right now, but um, if she is, I wouldn't mind hearing from her just so she can um, inform, inform the public about what's going on on that end. But um, everything's going through the health department, I think, Janet, as far as, as, far as that stuff goes. And that's it. Okay, um, so Suzanne, do you have any plans to lessen the number of parking at the other beaches? Uh, hang on, you're 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 on. No, but I have to I have to unmute people. So when they mute, oh, that's them, Courtney. I'm sorry, I thought you were Suzanne. Sorry. Go ahead, Suzanne. Okay, I'm unmuted. Uh, at this point, I don't. I would like to think that it is only April 28th and um, before we have to worry about the other beaches a lot would be sometime in about a month from now. So during that month, I'm hoping we get in conversation with neighboring towns and the seashore and the state comes forth with some guidelines and best practices. Um, and then we can make a decision. I, as an old eighth grade teacher, my tendency is to start really, really strict and then ease up as indicated, because if you start really, really loose, you never regain control. So that's my personal position on this. Uh, can we hear from Chief Hurley? Um, I have my hand up. Oh, I don't see that, but let me hear from Chief. All right, go ahead. I want to hear from Chief Hurley, sorry. Yeah, I always want it. I always want to hear from Chief Hurley. Suzanne, I hear you. There is nothing here that's going to keep them from coming. Well, and except closing all the beaches completely as Janet described people doing in California. I don't want to do that. There already is a problem of density in the beach parking lots. Both Kathleen and I have experienced it. And density- okay. A couple of things before Chief Hurley comes on the line. Um, I don't want to close the beaches. The beaches are people's place to go when they want a little peace and a serenity and not to think about what's happening in the rest of their lives. I would like to keep the beaches open and keep them as safe as possible. Having said that, it's up to the individual goodwill of people on the beach who've been allowed to go there about social distancing and proper hygienic practices. We can recommend, we can inform, and we can advise and then it's on the adult human beings who are using the beaches to go the next step. And I don't want any barricades. I know I don't have the personnel to be chasing people or the will. The police department is certainly not needing to focus on the beaches during a busy, busy summer season. And I would like to engage the, the people who use the beach in responsible use of that beach while still reducing the density as much as we can by reducing parking where indicated. Thank you. Um, Chief Hurley, see, ready to go? He's on and then Chief Pauly wanted to make a comment. Okay, let Chief Pauly go first then. 
Well, Hurley's on too, so whoever... oh, he is. Okay, you said he wasn't ready. Okay, Chief Hurley. Yeah, hi, Madam Chair, and, and good evening to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I would comment that the emergency response team has really put a lot of thought into this. Um, to be quite honest, from a public safety standpoint, I don't really know how this summer is going to go smooth, regardless of whatever restrictions we put in place or limitations. Um, as we're seeing right now, the end of April, my department on a continuous daily basis is getting phone calls for unmasked people, social distance violations, and out-of-state license plates. So I can't even imagine what the phone calls are going to look like come June, July, and August. So I fully support the team and Suzanne. And again, I, I truly believe that this can be a moving target, that if things change, get better, get worse, that we can move with that, um, whether it's, you know, through an emergency meeting, through reevaluating every two weeks, through your meetings and reporting back to you to let you know how things are going. I, I don't I don't see tonight as, you know, we have to firmly lock it in and we have no wiggle room. But, um, you know, right now I do support the recommendation. And, you know, my department understands that it's 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 going to be a tough summer for us. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chief Polly. You're good to go, Chief Polly. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, through you. Uh, I'll repeat a little of what I said this morning at our emergency management team meeting. Uh, we are in unprecedented times, something that I don't think any one of us ever thought we'd see in our lifetime. We haven't reached the plateau yet here in Massachusetts. We haven't seen an end plateau. As the governor has said, it's gonna be 14 days of either leveling and then declining. We're at May, uh, at this point, we're at May 18th, when the governor is going to, to revisit this or come up with other recommendations or uh, provisions. And then seven days from that is Memorial Day. So we're not gonna have a lot of time to make changes. As a matter of fact, we're gonna have zero time to make changes as to where we're at. Um, no one here on this emergency management team is anti-business. And I absolutely um, am offended by that um, comment made by a citizen of this community. All we're trying to do is provide the best public safety and public health guidance to this board to the best of our ability. Uh, the key is reducing the volume of people uh, as to the best extent that we can on the beaches. And as Mr. DeVasto said, we can always, always revisit this right after Memorial Day into the middle of June, uh, July 1st. Uh, but I think we need to have a plan in place right now to work through this. And I support the beach director's recommendations and the recommendations of the emergency management team to close uh, that section of the White Crest parking lot uh, effectively with this, bo vo with this uh, board's vote. And then again, we can look at it as we move forward down the road if we can revisit that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, has the emergency management team, are they starting to look at when businesses open, what pr procedures they're going to put in place that they'd like to see? Or are, there, are any businesses like the Chamber of Commerce getting back to you saying, uh, this is how we're going to manage how many people in a store or how many people in a restaurant? And also, what about rentals and hotels? Has anybody started discussing that or when are we going to start discussing that? If I may, Madam Chair, yes. we, yeah. we've had initial, Chief Paul here again, we've had initial discussions about phasing in um, when business, businesses can start to open. Again, we're really relying on the state and I know the state, uh, the governor's put together a small uh, task force to, to make mm -hmm. good recommendations in terms of what type of business um, and, and at what volume, if people, if you will, or what population of people that they'll be able to serve. Um, but again, he's, once those decisions are that those recommendations are made, it's my understanding that it's going to come back to the local level, the local governments to, to basically provide that guidance or enforcement, if you will, and I hate to use that term. Um, and then we, again, we are waiting for some, some guidance on the short-term rental situation. I can only reiterate that, you know, we are on in April 28th. We're 27 days away from Memorial Day. Uh, government, you know, needs to make some decisions which are in the best uh, interest of public health and public safety. 
and we can always dial those back or make adjustments if, you know, God willing, which we all hope for, that things improve sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if, the, if there's nothing else from the board, I'll open this up to the public. So Dan Hort has a comment, and then it looks like Devasto, Bacon, and Wilson all have their hands raised again, and there are a few questions from the public. So I'll let, I, Dan has been waiting a while, so. Okay. Madam Chair, this is Dan Hort. Um, echoing on a, on a lot of what has already been said, um, Select Board Member Wilson, uh, you know, talked about getting the word out and getting it out now. That's kind of why we're trying to say right now we have to get the message out that the the main parking lot of Whitecrest Beach parking lot is closed. Um, for the beachcomber and any other business in town, um, you can call me at any time and we can work on a plan with the health agent. We can work on a plan that that shows how you can keep people social distance. We'll work with any business in the community to try and help them get through this. Um, we'll work with the chamber, the beachcomber, anybody in the business community. Um, our, as I said, our main goal is to keep everybody safe and keep them healthy. But and I don't profess to have all the answers in this, but if anybody can wants to come and talk to me, and not come to talk to me, but talk to me on the phone, and we can come up with a plan on how your business might operate and operate safely, um, I'm all for it. Let's, let's work together on this and try and find a solution. The one thing I would say about we are not going to be able to keep everybody from coming to Wellfleet, but if on a normal great sunny day we have 5,000 people to come and we can limit it to 2,500, we've at least achieved part of our goal. And and by sending that message out of saying that Wellfleet beaches or Wellfleet parking is closed to the public unless you're a resident, that should discourage a few people. But you're going to get people who will still come and will still park somewhere illegally or ask somebody to drop them off because they can't park there. But if we can reduce the size of the crowds, then we've started to achieve our goal. Thank you. Um, so Mike and Helen, and unless you have something really, I, I'd like to open it up to the public. Do you guys do you guys have something that you want to say now, or do you have something that you want to say at the end of it? Mike, you can go first. I would just like to say something now because we were just talking about the short-term rental issue, and we probably won't make a decision on that obviously tonight. Uh, it looked like from the email that we got from KP Law that we do have some authority to uh, to limit short-term rentals. I don't really think it's fair uh, if we think that short-term rentals are not going to be able to be uh, begin on May 18th um, and into Memorial Day. I would really urge the board to at least make uh, a recommendation that people do not make take short-term rentals up until June first. Um, it just seems. I mean, it's it makes me nervous. The idea of like a hot Memorial Day weekend and having droves of people and being able to rent all our short-term rentals that are available in motels in this town at that time. And so, I would like to kick that back to the emergency management team. But it did seem like in the uh, the letter from KP Law that we have some latitude. She did say that there, there was a clause in there that she had said that um, we need to make sure that the state allows that uh, when they issue the order. Sometimes they restrict it. Um, and I'm not sure if the state did or they're allowing it like they did last time. So we could push that back a, few, a couple more weeks to the beginning of June um, and sort of head off Memorial Day weekend. Um, it's just still a time in the state where we're surging. And so I just think it would be short-sighted of us to not address that issue sooner than later because uh, Memorial Day weekend's coming up quick. May 18th is like, what, three weeks away or something like that. And, um, you know, if people are going to be like booking rentals and, and um, taking them in good faith, thinking that the economy might open by then, um, and then having to deal with all the refunds and the sort of non-compliance that can result from that sort of issue. Uh, I, I just, I just really think we need to address this soon. Great. Yes. Um, 
a lot of people have reservations that they made from last year and do you mean short term by a weekend or a week rental no, the um yes chamber and that community is really going to step up with some plans because i agree that's going to be right after white crest we got to talk about that so maybe we can put that on our agenda for in for two weeks and have that okay um did helen go helen yes no helen, helen did not go okay am i unmuted yes go ahead okay two things i'm referring to the excellent short memorandum of recommendations from suzanne um i think we should act tonight i'm ready to act tonight on her suggestion that the required date for beach stickers be moved up from the third saturday in june to may 20th 2020 for this year not on the agenda uh yes it is yeah. well we have discussed a number of things that are okay. not on the agenda this is absolutely a document that came for this agenda item kathleen okay so so Helen, you're you getting ahead of me. I want to open it up to the public. Please. Hold on. I have another thing, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, these haven't been brought up. Also tonight, the clear decision between should we allow day trippers, short-term visitors who come up for the day to come and get a permit for that by paying at the White Crest parking lot or not. I hope we're going to vote on that tonight and make a decision about it. On the so those are the two things I wanted to say, but can we also act on the idea of moving the required date for beach stickers? Because that would also mean that the visitors would not be able to come starting a month earlier. So that, um, I, you know, I'm assuming that Suzanne's memo to us was included in the packet and is on the yeah. agenda no it's not janet it, not, and I we know. don't have a motion for it so yeah. i would suggest we deal with that may 12th madam chair i'm looking at it here it is in the agenda we the don't packet. have a motion it's for it okay. anyhow i'm going to look at this while we open it up to the public okay so first we have daniel murray i'm going to unmute you daniel go ahead hi everybody can you hear me yep yes okay sure it's uh Thank you. I know mean, these are very difficult times. Um, so basically, it sounds like what I'm hearing is that for Memorial Day weekend, every every beach will be open at full capacity, except for the back side of uh, Whitecrest Beach. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, Dan mentioned uh, on a nice day, 5,000 people would come down and that would be. So I'm wondering if we cut that in half, where are those 2,500 people going to park? And then Suzanne mentioned uh, that we're going to be uh, 6,400 cars are going to be coming down this summer. Let's be let's say that COVID knocks out half of those. Maybe that leaves 3,200 cars. I'm wondering where those 3,200 uh, cars are going to park. Um, um, we we're already seeing the beaches are already full. Like already, it's still April and they're full on the weekends. Uh, you can drive down to any beach on any day and see, you know, uh, tons of cars there. And on the weekends, they're packed. So people are definitely going to come. Uh, and I, I totally, uh, you know, the last thing I want to see at the Beachcomber is a million people down there when, when we can only let 100 people in all summer. Uh, as far as music goes, we I've canceled all music for the summer just for right now. I'm not even trying to book any bands. Just doesn't make any sense. But uh, I mean, it, it sounds like uh, what we're saying is, um, you know, that that people who park at Newcombs and LeCounts are inherently better at social distancing than people who park at Whitecrest. I mean, it, oh, oh, as a matter of fact, know. it was already said that people even now with the signs up aren't social distancing and aren't respecting the uh, uh, suggestions. Right. I just yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. I get that. I just know that if if we if we do this then just plan on, you know, plan on Ocean View Drive becoming a, you know, a mess again. Tons of cars driving around town, people parking on the side of the road, buses, Ubers, cabs, you know, people are going to come. Uh, I, either shut down all the beaches or, or don't. I don't. I don't understand why, you know, so you want, do you want all day trippers to go away? Do you want no people at Mayo Beach, no people at the pier, no people at Town Hall, or just day trippers who like to go to the beach? 
That's my question. Yep. I'll throw it back to you guys. Thank you. Okay, anyone else from the public? Yep, a few of them. Steven Gazzano, you're next. Hello? Yep, yes. Go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, my name's Steve Gazzano. I uh, manage beaches and urban settings in San Francisco where we uh, used to get 5 million visitors uh, and in Marin County, Northern California, and then here on Cape Cod. Um, and, and one thing I did learn is don't set the visitor up to fail. Um, you, you need to provide the visitor with some options, provide him with a brochure uh, to, to maybe go to Marconi because I know the seashore is gonna be open. I spent 37 years in the park service and, and, and they have a law enforcement arm that can enforce social dis, distancing um, because if they come, they're going to the beach. And if not the beach, the ponds. The ponds will be overrun. You should think of, and, and really, and that's gonna affect the resource. So you, you need to think about maybe closing the sand roads uh, um, because it really will become a social issue and, and, and there's gonna be no social distancing in the ponds. Um, secondly, you need a united strategy working with the NPS and other towns. So everybody's on the same re, uh, on, on the same sheet of music and it's coordinated. And one suggestion I have is maybe the seashore shouldn't charge. They, they have parking lots that hold, you know, 400 people. There's a um, little creek parking lot. Uh, and, and, and I, how is it going to be different at Le Counts and Nuka? Um, and, and I think you can design a brochure that you can give people, here's an option for you. And instead of just having people parking wherever. Um, and also concerning Southern California, uh, their beaches are in an urban setting with uh, you know, millions of people. Um, and lastly, uh, yeah, I, I would just uh, get a strategy with really the seashore um, and, 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 and give people a brochure uh, so when they come, they can't park. Here you go. Here's an option because they drove, you know, from Boston or wherever they want to go to the beach. So give them an option. And, and if I could just tell one quick story um, in, in not wanting to set people up to fail, uh, the Rangers always used to go write tickets for everybody parking on, on the grass. And, and we said, no, let's not, you know, people love Wealthy, they, they love the park. And so what we did is uh, we put up a, slip, a split rail fence so they didn't get tickets and we provided them with places to park. And anyway, the, those are my comments and thank you, Janet. Well, thank you, Steve. Um, I think I like that we don't wanna set them up to fail, um, which is another aspect of this of PR, advertising, Facebook, letting people know ahead of time what to expect when they come down here. Uh, who's next from the public? That would be Bruce uh, Beerhands. So go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, hi everybody, how are you? Good. I almost don't know where to start. That's a lawyer in me, but I'll keep it real short. Um, I think probably the best thing that I can suggest at this point is that we um, let this decision be as uh, I think Chief Hurley suggested um, a moving target. I mean, we all know because we have this discussion every year that nothing, no business is affected as much by what happens at Whitecrest than the beachcomber. And my initial comment, and, and I said this in an email to the board um, one or two days ago, is that I initially felt that the decision was premature until we knew what the governor was going to recommend. For example, 
um, if you're a business like the Beachcomber or any any of the other restaurants, once the governor comes um, uh, comes down with a recommendation or or a mandate and says that a restaurant, whether it be in the Berkshires or whether it be on the Cape, and he also has the opportunity, by the way, to make different recommendations for different areas of the state. But if he says the Beachcomber is list, is is limited to 40 or 50 percent occupancy. Then uh, Dan and Todd and, and, and everyone at the Beachcomber have to make a decision about what they're going to do, uh, what safety protocols they're going to put in place, where they're going to have the people, will they use the interior of the building uh, as well as the exterior. If they use the exterior and set up tables in the parking lot, um, will they then need spaces to be made available at Whitecrest, for example? And by the way, even at Whitecrest, everybody doesn't have to park next to each other. You can impose uh, restrictions at Whitecrest so that uh, people that do park there park uh, two or three uh, car uh, lengths apart. So there are things that you can do in Whitecrest to limit occupancy without closing the whole thing and without um, depriving the, the town of all of the revenue that it's going to need. So I, I think that based upon what the governor decides, and then based upon what decisions that we might make that are well fleet centric, there are many decisions that will still have to be made, um, but we don't know what the answers are until we hear from the governor, until we decide then what's best for well fleet. I mean, obviously, I think people that know me and know other things that I've done in town know that safety and the health of our residents and our, our guests and um, and the health of our businesses as well um, is, is, is a first priority. So I think at the moment, there's a lot that we don't know. And until we know what the answers to some of those questions are, I think it's hard for anybody to make a decision. And from that perspective, um, I think we at least need to acknowledge that this has to be a, a moving target. And we may have to make decisions based upon what the governor does and what we decide is in the best interests of, uh, of everybody at Wellfleet. The other, the other practical matter is that obviously, you know, we've been paying $50,000 a year for that front parking lot. And if we don't have the use of that parking lot or if we have to use that parking lot so that patrons can observe, can observe social distancing and we don't have the option to use any parking spaces at Whitecrest, I don't think we can pay $50,000 to the town nor can we pay $40,000 for the shuttle bus, which is what we've been doing. I mean, that's a significant amount of, uh, of, of revenue that has to be taken into consideration. So there are basically, it is a moving target. There are many factors here. I think we have to do obviously what's in the best interest of the health and safety of everybody, not only the residents, but people that visit the town. And I just think at the moment, there's a lot that we just don't know about what's going to happen in the next um, two weeks or four weeks or, or even a longer period of time. Thank you. Um, yes, this is, uh, these are unusual times. Um, anybody else from the town? I mean, from the public? Yep, uh, Mary Ellen Regis, and then I have a couple from the email and the chat that I'll read. Susan, uh, Helen, okay, Janet. thank you. Go ahead, Mary Ellen. Uh, I just, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. I just wanted to say that um, I, I think that part of your charge is to protect the people who do live here year round. Um, we have been quarantined just like you for two months plus now. And um, while I would love everybody to come back, um, it makes me a little nervous to think that we might have a short-term rental and those people aren't going to quarantine. Do we still, will we still be quarantined? I think we have to um, think about, I, I don't want to get this virus from people coming in just for a day trip. So I, I think we might need to um, be a little strident in what we recommend but certainly, as Bruce and other people have said, um, with the fact that, that if things are really going well, we can open ourselves up a lot more. So, um, you know, I, I think that the people who, who live in this town 
uh, really need to be thought of and how the arrival of all these other people are not only going to affect the town, but affect us personally and physically. Thank you. Um, next. All right. So a couple here from the chat. Um, Suzanne, I guess you can speak to this as to why not just get rid of um, all non-resident beach passes. Um, I, I will unmute you in a second. And then the other comment is about short-term rentals. And um, if you have short-term rentals and are waiting on guidance from the town, but don't feel comfortable having them, I, I, I honestly, I, if I had a short-term rental and I didn't want to host people, I would just cancel it myself and not wait on guidance. So I, I would say if you're really uncomfortable on not having people stay in your short-term rentals at this time, then, then go ahead and make a decision um, while we as the town work towards this goal. Um, the, the town is working hard. It's been said here and in the morning calls um, a million times that, that the town is working as best as we can and waiting on guidance from the governor. I also got an email that Airbnb is not accepting reservations through May 31st, supposedly. Um, so yeah. I guess the main question is for Suzanne um, as in terms of why not just get rid of every beach pass that is not resident only. So Suzanne. That, that has been suggested. Um, it's really it, in a sort of one tunnel vision way, it would be a really simple way to reduce the numbers of the people on the beach. However, in reality, if you look at the numbers, the number of visitor stickers is about a thousand less than the number of day passes. So when I went to look at which area you should, could be eliminated, it made more sense to do the day passes because the people who come to buy visitor stickers rent from local landowners, landlords, they eat in local restaurants, they shop in local shops, they buy art in local galleries, and they're participatory while they're here. They, they are uh, part of the economic engine that drives our town. And I really would not feel comfortable cutting all visitor stickers out. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any other more just comments that, that all of these comments, all of these comments, which are mostly opinions, will be saved in the chat record and will be posted online. We've spent an hour on this topic, Madam Chair, so um, there's not really any other questions right now um, that are coming up. Okay. Um, Suzanne? So yes. On our agenda, um, it doesn't say anything. So you, you sent us a paper that says you also want to recommend um, uh, beach sticker dates, required beach stickers um, May 20th, and only resident beach stickers and resident combination stickers be allowed. Do you, do you want us to vote on that tonight? Because that is not on the agenda. We got it in our packet, but it's not on the agenda. Do you need us to vote on that tonight? No, I was apparently yes. unclear in my memo. What I'm asking for is for you to schedule a hearing for May 12th to amend the beach rules and regulations to change that date. Okay, very and good. And have a specific agenda item for that issue. Okay. Great, On Thank the 12th. You. All right, well, um, but could you vote on the uh, White Crest thing? I'm about to. <laughs> uh, may I have a motion, Kathleen? Madam Chair, I move that the main day pass parking lot at White Crest Beach be closed for the 2020 summer season in order to limit visitors to town beaches as recommended by the beach administrator. Is there a second? Uh, yep, yeah, hold on. Mike, do you just want to second it? You're unmuted. Yeah, well, I. I just was wondering if we could, instead of putting the summer season of 2020 into, until further notice. Okay, so, uh, so second it and then say further discuss. And I would- okay, second uh, it and further discuss. And then say that you don't want it for the whole season and that you want to take it month by month. <laughs> yeah, I would like to take it uh, in, in shorter mouth. stride. Okay. Um, so he's amending the motion. Is there uh, we have to? Uh, is there a second to amend the motion? Yeah, I'm trying to unmute people, um, Janet. But if yeah, people take are, your time. Take your time. Yeah, 
Helen, if you're trying to unmute yourself, you can't. <laughs> so just hang on. Justina, you're unmuted. And Helen, can you unmute yourself? I can't seem to do it for some reason. Go ahead. You're good. Yeah, um, I'm going to vote against this, not because I disagree with Suzanne's best efforts, but because I think the trick here is not to close a space for parking, but to say simply no day tripper passes will be sold or allowed. And then I had a question, which is, it's unclear to me. We have, we don't we have a second and an amendment to this, to the, um, to the motion. motion. Yeah. Did you hear that? I heard it just now, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna vote against it and I just stated why. This is during the further discuss section. I'm done. Okay. So are you voting against the amended second that Mike said to not have it go for the whole season, but to take it month by month or whatever. No, I'm voting, I'm gonna vote against the whole thing. Okay, okay. For the reason I stated. Okay, um, Justina, how are you voting? Voting on Mike's amendment or voting on the motion? Uh, the amendment. Mike's amendment. I, I am against Mike's amendment. Okay. So um, that fails. So the motion stands as Kathleen read it uh, to move that the main day pass parking lot at White Crest Beach be closed for the 2020 summer season in order to limit visitors to town beaches as recommended by the beach administrator. Um, all in Helen favor. Helen second. Helen second. All in favor. Kathleen, aye. Justina, aye. Michael, aye. Okay, Janet, aye. Helen aye. May. Who? Oh, and Helen May, yep. So uh, motion passes, and I would like to say to anybody, especially the beachcomber, uh, <clears throat> let's see what can be done to work, to work this out, okay? This is a very tricky year, and uh, things are still uh, fluid in many ways. Um, okay, moving on to um, canceling the 4th of July parade for 2020. Any comments from the board? Um, okay, um, I have Oh, Mike has his hand up. Okay, go ahead, Mike. I don't see any way we could not cancel the 4th of July parade. Yep, I agree. Um, anyone else or do we want to make a motion? I move that the 4th of July parade is canceled for 2020. Helen second. All in favor say aye. Helen aye. Kathleen aye. Justina aye. Michael. Janet, I. Mike. I'm okay. trying to unmute him. Board members, I, please do not mute yourself. I, we have to unmute you. I have to unmute you again. Okay, sorry, Courtney. Okay. Aye. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Um, thank you. And now we move on to discussion of town property on future events for 2020. Uh, any comment by the board? Madam Chair, may I bring up something? This is Dan Hort. Yes, you may. So in if the board wants to vote on it, one of our other recommendations that I'm doing right now is to keep town buildings closed through Sunday, May the 17th. If the board is okay with that, they don't need to take a vote. If the board feels like they want to vote on that, I would ask that you do that this evening. Well, seeing as that's what the governor suggests, um, I'm certainly in favor of it. I'd like to vote on that. 
Okay. All right. All right, Janet, I'll make a motion. I move that all town buildings be closed until May the 17th, 2020. Second for the sake of discussion. Is there a second? Yes, I just seconded it. Okay. For the sake of discussion. Okay. All Question right. through you, Madam Chair, to Dan Hort. I'm not looking at a calendar. Are we gonna have a select board meeting that we could change our minds about that before May 18th? May 12th. May 12th, I mean. No, opening, we're talking about opening the town buildings. We have a you board meeting have... May 12th. Yes. Through, through you to Dan Hort, please. Yes, there is a board meeting on the 12th of May, at which time you can discuss whether to begin a gradually reopening or to keep the buildings continue to be closed. Right, I understood that. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. I didn't realize you were talking about the select board meeting. Thank you, because we may find on May 12th that it's not a good idea. That's the only reason I asked. So we've got a second and we've got a motion. Um, I was, Madam Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Um, I, I just think for continuity and consistency, this was written before the governor's orders. His orders go to May 18th. Maybe we should just make ours go to May 18th as well, just for continuity. Yeah, I agree. I think, did he kind of mandate it? I didn't hear his whole speech, but he is, he is recommending that all state buildings stay closed until May 17th or 18th. Yeah. So I would kind of go along with what the, the um, um, governor recommends. I, th I think May 18th was a Monday, so that's why Dan said the 17th, so we could have that yeah. full week, but it's your call. Yeah. Um, so um, any dis further discussion, Justina? I think we should, I think it's a good idea. To do the 18th or the 17th. Oh. Uh, to, go, to go along with Governor Baker. Well, 18th is consistent. Yes, okay, good. Um, all right, so um, the motion is to uh, closed, continue having all town municipal buildings closed until May, till after May 17th, which is a Sunday. Um, all in favor? Second. 18th. Helen, aye. Kathleen, aye. Justina, aye. Michael, aye. And Janet, aye. So Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Janet, this is for the 18th, and, and just a reminder, this does not include the police station. That doesn't need to be in your motion. That's how it's been since this started. So just an FYI to people, the police will be open. Yes, right. Thank you for that reminder. Um, excuse me, um, Madam, Madam Chair? Yes. Your motion said until the 17th. It didn't well, say The 17th is a Sunday, so through the 17th is a Sunday. After yeah. the 17th. Yeah. Yeah, until you after the 17th. It on the 12th. Someone's breaking up. I said you can still revisit it on the 12th. If you decide yes. at that point you want to take it to the 18th Thank or 19th, you can do that. I'm yeah. satisfied. How are you? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so discussion of future events for um, 2020. Uh, my question was, again, since this is all in flux, there are people that have would like events, we know that. Um, uh, does, unless I'm trying to remember what Dan said, that does this include only new requests or all requests? And can we change it to, uh, again, taking it on a month by month basis, especially if there's something like a wedding that they can limit the number, agree with social distancing, or if there's some other event that as long as they have put, in, put procedures into place do we want to allow them to have them rather than the 2020 calendar year? Anybody want to discuss that? Yeah, yeah I do, Janet. I do. My hands up. Okay. A um, couple of things on this. Um, you know, nobody has said this word tonight. Nobody has said this word. We're waiting on a vaccine. And until we have a confirmed vaccine that's readily available at no cost to all the residents in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 
How do we condone any large event? How do we morally condone an event? Okay, vaccine, that could happen when? Do we, do we have an, an, a ballpark on when that happens? We don't. Year and a half. Again, I've got a small statement. I do not feel that we the select board or town staff can confidently say when we will return to a pre-COVID normal. But again, I want to impart to all residents and non-residents alike, we have an obligation to your health and safety and to ensure that means to any end. We should not sanction the gathering of large groups on town property until we have a vaccine. Our private function in someone's backyard, we have no say over. Town property, we have the right to say no. I made that motion on the 24th of March and I still stand by it. Until somebody comes up with a vaccine and says, have a ball, have a 4th of July parade, I don't really think we have any choice here. Again, it's a heartbreak, but I really don't think we have a choice, Madam Chair. So I think I said a small wedding or a small occasion on town property that we could consider it. Um, but I totally agree with you. Any large uh, gathering is, um, I mean, it's death. If anybody listened to Governor Cuomo yesterday, yeah. two days ago, it's death. So, um, so my, my suggestion is that we're not saying to the remainder of the 2020 calendar, but the remainder of the summer. And who else wants to say something? I've got my hand up. All the board well, I, I can't see hands, so it's up to Courtney to see hands. We're going in seniority, like was said to Janet from Janet in your email. So Helen, Kathleen, Justina, Mike. Okay, go Helen. Okay, we don't have vaccines. We don't have tracing. There was a nice long. We do have tracing. Hold on. There was a nice long description of how tracing can take place in a community like this today that I listened to the whole thing. And we have the beginning of tracing. It isn't happening yet. And it's so, actually- So hold on, Helen. I really want to correct you because it is happening. It started happening in Wellfleet on the Cape uh, three weeks ago, three weeks, starting three weeks ago. So I'm not sure where, out of Cape Health has not started doing it, but the state has started tracing three weeks ago. That's good to know. I didn't know about, I just knew about Outer Cape and yeah. in general in Massachusetts, because we're talking about people who aren't just here. Remember, in the summer, the tracing is going to be very different because it's going to be taking right. place. Well, tracing is not really an Please answer. don't interrupt me. I, I know, but move on from tracing. Tracing is not the answer. It's a, it's a part of it. I'm not talking about it. I was addressing what Kathleen brought up and tracing adequate to our needs as a place that gets a huge influx from other places is not what it will be next year, okay? We don't have vaccines, we don't have tracing, and what we don't have is, if you remember what Suzanne said very accurately, we don't have any way to keep people from forgetting that they shouldn't stand close together and they should wear masks. We don't have any way to do it, and I think that it would be not only a liability, but humanly irresponsible for us to allow any functions on town property, at least until this season and even the fall has gone by. And I hate it. I hate saying no to people. And I hate almost everything about this situation, as do we all. But we can't we can't say yes to people when we know they're putting us and other people in harm's way. Yes, I'm including staff and business uh, businesses that have essential workers and all of us. So I think we shouldn't have any, I would be happy to close it through the fall season because as we know about this virus now, there will probably be more of it in the fall. It will keep cycling until we have vaccines. And unfortunately, it's the countries in the world that are, you know, dictatorships basically, that have severely restricted people 
and not even let people out of the house, including children that have seen a real result. The minute people get allowed to go out again, there's more contagion and the numbers go up. And I'm gonna say the thing, I finish every sentence, every, everything I say about this. Most of the people who have this virus are asymptomatic. Thank you. Christina. Oh, um, a couple of things. I yeah, I think like we feel like Scrooge today, saying we're we're going to cancel this and we're going to cancel that, but uh, we're dealing with this virus, and until gatherings are safe, we have to say no. I did want to add that um, I reached out to Spat and to Michelle Isley as uh, Spat liaison, and she is here today. I know Spat's been having agonizing conversations and um, ho hope to enter into some sort of dialogue uh, with the select board because they, of course, are, uh, you know, looking at a bunch of difficult decisions. So I did want to mention she was here tonight. Thank you. Um, any, any further comments or can I have a motion? I have a comment. Oh, okay, Mike. Um, I just want to say that I think Kathleen's probably right. I mean, restricting it is uh, definitely the, um, the prudent thing to do. Um, I do think that um, if the, the restrictions under 10 people, um, I think there's some leeway. I don't know if the board should, should take that, um, but if there's a s small wedding of like insular family members, I don't know that I would be opposed to allowing to do that if they, you know, committed to, uh, to social distancing standards. And, you know, if there's people who have been planning a wedding, they decide to just do it themselves um, on the beach, their insular family, family I wouldn't have a problem with that coming before the board. So uh, I think, you know, there's that maybe we should allow some some leeway for people to come before and we can always, I, I'm on the fence about it basically, but I do think that there's a little room um, to allow people to do certain things. Um, that, not, we don't, that we can restrict any use of town property that would allow more than 10 people, which is what the governor says gatherings could be. And then if those people were willing to do something that was under 10 people and would follow guidelines, I'd be willing to hear that uh, as far as the use of town property. So I just wanted to bring that up. Madam Chair, it's Kathleen. Yes. I just want to say that um, you know, it's, a, it's a great thought, Mike, but I think that um, if, our, if our health agent's okay with it, if they go to the health agent, and um, set up something with the health agent and then come before the board and fill out an application, that's one thing. But we're talking about large gatherings here in this motion. Um, we're, we, we just canceled the biggest large gathering we do, which is 4th of July parade. That's also on town property. So um, yeah, I mean, a, a wedding of eight or 10 people, you know, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, I was just referring back to, to Janet's uh, original statement about small gatherings. That's all. Uh, obviously, large gatherings are a no-go. Madam Chair. Uh, I want to ask uh, Dan Hort if he had. So we did vote on this last meeting, um, or actually in March, uh, that there would be no future applications for events for the calendar year. And then we did say two weeks ago that we would review a request, any request through the summer or something that we would re, re look at it. So Mr. Hort, what I'm, I guess I'm trying to get the idea behind the motion. See there? So yes, yeah. this is Dan Hort. Um, the idea was to send the message out to people who have been asking, well, can I reschedule mine to the fall? 
um, and, and it started kind of from the point of view from um, the uh, WRMA triathlon. W O R M A, yeah. Yeah, triathlon. And we wanted to hear from the select board if, if they even want to entertain any of these or if at this point it's just we won't entertain anything for the 2020 season. Okay, good. Thanks for that clarification because it does say no future applications. And I wasn't sure if that included the applications that we said to come back to us later. Um, right. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I may, right now we have rescinded everything that had, had been previously approved for 2020. And so what you're saying here is that still stands and we will not accept any future applications for the remainder of the calendar year. Yeah, that's the motion, Janet. Okay, so did anybody second that? I don't think so. Well, I haven't made a motion yet, Janet. There are some okay. public comments if you want them. Okay, good. All right. Yes. Um, okay. So Madam Chief, Chair. Uh, we're gonna hear public comments now. Uh Chief Hurley, you um I'm gonna unmute you. Go ahead, Chief. Yep, thanks, Courtney. And uh through you, Madam Chair, uh, a few weeks ago our emergency management team did get together on various items and this was one and I guess I, I had a little bit of confusion myself back in March um, the the length of the motion that was taken which our, our our board or team was very happy with and you know really at this point you know our, our recommendation would be that you know any any previous events that you did approve have been rescinded through your March 24th vote and as we move along same with the beach parking lot issues through May, June, and July, you know, I, I, I would say that, you know, events can come back with a revised, um, you know, agenda, revised event and see if you would approve it at all. But, um, you know, it's, it was causing too much confusion. This event's canceled, but maybe Oyster Fest can still happen. And um, I, I, I just think right now we just need to have a level playing field from our team and have groups come back in over the the upcoming months, if you so wish to take them to review and let us vet these events again, because I think unfortunately, and I'll bring up Oyster Fest, they were a group that were vetted under much different circumstances, right. um, which obviously have changed. So I think the easiest thing from here forward is um, if we are going to entertain any applications, let us vet them and if appropriate, bring to you um, or something to that effect. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. Um, so I get. I just want to make a comment to Chief Hurley. Um, I guess the, the WOMR people are really looking to change their date to let their athletes know when to register. So um, that's something we can talk about offline and then maybe bring it back um, and, and talk to them then. But based on that decision, they were looking to do it for September, October. Um, but we have a comment from Kurt Felix, so I'm going to let him go next. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair um, and Courtney. I did, my comment is just that um, two things. I think I agree with the vast majority of sentiments that have been expressed. Obviously, this is a serious situation. Um, the one thing that hasn't been brought up, and I think we, we want to be careful about, is whether it's a vaccine or medicines or other things that could change, and notably even things that uh, could be coming from um, uh, you know either the state or the federal government with regard to policies, procedures, um, whether it's tracing, uh, whether it's new medicines, there's a variety of things that could change this equation positively. I mean, I think we're looking at the negative and obviously we, you know, everybody's concern is about, is about public safety and public health. But I do think that flexibility is really important. So I think the chief's comment, you know, which is, uh, you know, to rescind everything makes sense and let people come back and vet them as we see and as conditions may change is really, really sensible. And I, I think we would be remiss if we, um, you know, we didn't at least be open to the possibility that things can change for the better. Um, the other comment is that um, if we, you know, if we, we, I think we really also need to, to come up with an overall strategy with regard to the beaches. I think a singular closing of one parking lot, um, you know, it seems piecemeal to me. I think we've got a big problem I, I wouldn't want to be in anybody's shoes on this. Don't get me wrong. This is not an easy, easy situation for anybody to be in. 
but I do think we need to look to the governor. I think we need to look to public health uh, and officials within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, who are some of the best, um, to advise us as well on these. And I'm sure that the task force is doing that and reaching out. Um, it'd be interesting to hear more of that as well. But I don't want to go on, but just to say that I think um, it, this is a very fluid situation, and we should we should be mindful of that and careful in how we how we proceed going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep, um, Michelle Inslee from SPAT. Michelle, you're unmuted. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, gosh, it's just heartbreaking to hear the, this conversation tonight. And, you know, I myself and the SPAT board, we're, we're very concerned. We've been monitoring this situation. We take the responsibility of hosting a large event very seriously. Um, we don't have an answer either. We just um, definitely would like to be a part of the dialogue. So I'm happy to be here tonight. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I've been trying to establish uh, a drop dead deadline, if you will, for our event, because there are so many moving parts. Most of our vendors are pretty flexible, but I guess where it comes, what it comes down to is um, the, well, I mean, the, the exhibitors rather, let me call it the, the exhibitors rather than the vendors who help us put it together, the contracted vendors, but letting those exhibitors know and the public, because that's where things get involved. Like we charge booth fees to those exhibitors, you know, the food vendors, raw bars, art and craft vendors, and then the public wants to buy tickets. So at a certain point, we either need to allow those things to move forward, you know, continue with our plans or um, let people know that that won't be happening. Um, because otherwise it'll just be a lot of work doing refunds later or something like that. So we'll, we'll have to really establish some sort of timeline when we'll be holding it or not. And unfortunately, none of us have a crystal ball to know what October will be look like if we made a decision in July, August, you know, it's, it's so hard to know. So I was hoping to, yeah, get some guidance, talk it through, develop a strategy. Um, so I'm, and, and also I wasn't clear as Mike, as uh, Chief Hurley had said um, about the previous ruling. And so now I am clear, I understand that our application, our permit was indeed rescinded. And so if we would be um, invited to come back, we would need to know, you know when that would be, or, or if not, and I'm look forward to Okay, Any, anyone else from the public? I was, I'm Michelle, are you done? Yep. Okay, anyone else from the public? Yep, just a couple in the chat here. Um, one says, uh, please consider a major communication campaign to notify the public in advance about policies, restrictions, cancellations. Yeah. And then a comment saying, even if you have a small wedding, what if people bring more? So um, I, I, those are just kind of offhand questions. I, I, I don't know if there's any sort of comeback for that. Yeah, no, this is, these are all very, very difficult, you know, I'm, as I sit here listening to these, I mean, I agree with Kathleen, like, should we just cancel 2020? <laughs> you know? I mean, that's, that's the only, that's the only safe thing to do, because, uh, you know, I'm trying to, to do what's best for the economics of the town by having smaller groups and, you know, Beaches. How we? How are we going to keep social distancing? I would love it if uh, Chief Hurley had said you're going to go walk the beaches with bullhorns and tell people to separate. Yeah, this is all all really hard. And my first thought is, uh, yeah, like Oyster Fest as it has been will not be this year. Um, there's just too many people, and. You know, you go thinking about the beachcomber and all bars. I don't see bars being open at all. Now, you know, I don't have that final word, but you just can't have a lot of people in one place, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's very, very difficult. And we should all be journaling and keeping track of this because it's a pretty amazing thing that's happening to us. Um, so um, the motion is 
I, I haven't made it yet, Janet. I, I know. I'm just I'm just rephrasing it that we would if it would the vote to re remain closed for the cal the rest of the calendar year. So go ahead, Kathleen, and make the motion. Okay. Um, I also just want to add. Um, you know, this is heartbreaking. It yeah. really is heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, I feel for everybody out there that's without work that worries about their business, myself included. Um, it's a very difficult meeting right now. I move in accordance with the board vote on March 24th that no future applications for events requesting the use of town property be accepted for the remainder of the 2020 calendar year and that all previously approved events cannot occur. Motion to amend. <laughs> Okay, it was that Helen who seconded? I did, but um, okay. Mike uh, also spoke at the yeah. same time. So uh -huh. how do you want to handle it here? So when you speak, you've got to speak into the microphone and there's a lag time. So almost everything you've said tonight, the first few words are cut out. Okay, so I don't know how you can oh, hear, but um, yeah, that's why I haven't been understanding you well. So Mike, what's your motion to amend? I would just like it to say, rather than the remainder of 2020, to be until further notice. I just don't think that we know for a fact that things aren't gonna change until 2020. And to say we're not taking any future applications, that me we would not be, um, looking at any applications for use of town property for the entire year, I think um, is, a, I don't think it's necessary for us to say that. We, we can say until further notice and that can carry on uh, until we change our mind. Maybe it will go to the end of the year, but I also am not sure if we should not hear any future applications either. I mean, we can turn down 99% of them and we could say no future applications of use of town property over 10 people. Um, but I would prefer it to say, I would like to make an amendment that, that it said uh, that we would um, not take future applications until further notice is what I would prefer it to say. Mr. Hort, do you have a way of amending that amendment? Uh, he's unmuted, so. Madam Chair, I can second it and then we can discuss the amendment. Okay, Helen, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Mike, mm -hmm. people need to make plans through you, Janet. Yes. People need to make plans. And we need to be clear and decisive now about this. I personally think that even requests for, in quote, small gatherings of 10 people, all you need is three people. All you need is two people for one to infect the other. And again, most people are asymptomatic. People are getting sick from people who do not have symptoms. Right. And we need to be really decisive about this now. And I hate it, but having people thinking, oh, well, maybe the fall, by the middle of winter, we will know much more. We're not oh, talking right. about a whole year here. We're talking about June, July, August, September, November, uh, September, October, November, December. And we may know before that whether or not it's safe. Right now, it is not safe. It is not safe and it will not be safe for a long time. And people need to know that we are committed to keeping it safe in this community. And that I think is very good publicity for us. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair. What was your amendment, Mike? It was that uh, the amendment was that- No further uh, notification or something like that? I move in accordance with the board to vote on March 24th 
uh, with the vote on March 24th, but I guess I wouldn't say that exactly like that. No future applications for events of over 10 people requesting use of town property be accepted for, uh, be accepted until further notice mm -hmm. and that all previously approved events cannot occur. So that way, if somebody does want to come to us and goes to the Board of Health and says, this is what we want to do, we can hear it. Doesn't mean we have to approve it. And also we don't actually know what it's going to be like in November. Um, and so I think saying that we do, I mean, we can, we can make an educated guess, right? We can say, you know, we know that the remainder of 2020, we're not going to be able to have any kind of use of town property, but we don't really know that if 10 people are gathering by October that there's not therapeutics available or a better understanding of how to treat the virus or all the things that can come along with that. Um, we, we can't say that we know that, you know, for sure. That's, okay. that's unknown. And so I would prefer not to make it a date so far out into the future. We can always extend things, but it, it could be uh, until further notice. I mean, suspended okay. until further notice, until the board decides that we will hear those, you know? So I think to simplify it, this is mine, the board does not have to agree with me that no further applications for events requesting the use of town property be accepted until further notice, period. Um, do you like that amendment? I would be fine with that. Okay. I wouldn't mind being able to hear people who have, want to have a small gathering, but I don't. I wouldn't imagine approving it anytime soon. But you know, maybe by September, I don't know. You know what I mean? That's it. I, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting to see um, how humans are hopeful. You know, hope is a a big uh, non tangent, non tangible word. All right. Um, so, how does the board want to uh, does do you guys want to second Mike's amendment for until further notice or go with the one that Kathleen that for the year of 2020 for the remainder of the calendar year? How do you guys want to go? Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I'm just Madam Chair, is yeah. there a second for Mike's amendment? Yes, there was. I think. No, so there wasn't. Gonna... No, I don't. Okay. There hasn't been a second for the amendment, Janet. Okay. Um, I will second it. Um, so all in favor of the amendment, say aye. Aye. Okay, aye. All opposed, say nay. Helen, nay. Kathleen, no. Justina, no. Okay, so motion fails. So we go back to the original motion of having no future applications for events requesting the use of town property accepted for the remainder of the 2020 calendar year and all previously approved events cannot occur. Uh, I think Kathleen's was, can I have a second? We'll just do it over. Second. All in favor? Aye, Helen, aye. Kathleen, I. Justina, I. Michael, no. And Janet, no. So uh, three, four, two against, motion passes. Thank you guys. Um, all right, easy one. I think it's an easy one, but it should be shorter. Uh, moving on to uh, committee board and committee appointments. We have both Will Sullivan, Will, Wilson Sullivan, and Andrew Freeman up for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Will Sullivan to be a regular member. Can I have a motion to um, appoint Will Sullivan as a regular member to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending June 30th, 2022? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to mention. Um, that we received uh, two outstanding letters of recommendation, one from Sharon Inger and one from Jan Morrissey um, to appoint Wilson Sullivan and Andrew Freeman. I'll now make the motion 
I move to appoint Wilson Sullivan as a regular member of the Zoning Board of Appeals to fill a term ending June 30th, 2022. Second. Ellen, second. All in favor? Say aye. Ellen, aye. Kathleen, aye. Ellen, aye. Christina, aye. Did you hear me? Michael, aye. And Janet, aye. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Now we have a motion for Andrew Freeman. Second motion, I move to appoint Andrew Freeman as an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending June 30th, 2021, and that he resign immediately um, from his planning board membership upon this approval. Second. Ellen, second. All in favor? Say aye. Ellen, aye. Kathleen, aye. Justina, aye. Michael, aye. Janet, aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so now moving on to the transfer of rights for Nature's Alternative. Um, I believe people are here from Nature's Alternative on, yep. the, on the phone anyhow. Yep, Ben Zender is on, so I'll mute, unmute him. I think one of the... I, I don't know their name, so they're going to have to... Ben, if you could tell me who's on from the group, I can unmute them. I'm happy to. Madam Chair, uh, good evening. This is Ben Zender, and good evening, everyone on the board. Um, on the line also are Patrick Casey, who's the CEO of Nature's Alternative. If you could unmute him, Courtney. Yep. N Nicholas Salvador, who's the treasurer. Okay. And and Matthew Wilkes, who is the um, who is the operator for Wellfleet for okay, the company. Okay, all unmuted. Okay. Oh, May so I proceed? Yes. Do you want to just make a uh, statement for the public, Mr. Zender? I, I would love to, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm here with the representatives from, from Nature's Alternative. As you may recall, um, I was in front of your board um, in a number of meetings, first to um, request approval of a host community agreement for Nature's Alternative. Um, that was in June of 2018. At that time, the board voted to approve a, uh, a host community agreement as well as a letter of non-opposition for medical use for uh, anticipated use at the South Wolfie Dental Store property. Um, we came back in front of the board uh, and, and an HCA was in fact signed by both, all parties in December of 2018. Uh, we came back in front of the board in April of 2019 because my client had identified a change of location to the current, um, current location, which is in the, the old First National Store next to the Dunkin' Donuts. Um, and then uh, in, in August, we filed a request for, the, for a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, that, was, that was granted in September of uh, 2019. And most recently, I have, I have made a request to the, to the tech administrator for execution of what's called a, um, a host community agreement certification form, which the CCC requires in order for an applicant to uh, file a complete application with the CCC for operation. The, at this point, Nature's Alternative is, is ready to submit their complete application. And hopefully if this board approves the, the ownership of the company, uh, then they can, they can receive this certification form signed by the town administrator and they can submit that for uh, review by the CCC for the license application. They've already received their special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. That permit has a specific requirement that any change in the underlying ownership be approved by the Board of Appeals. So we have filed with the Board of Appeals um, a similar request, which will be heard on, I believe it's June 11th for approval of the underlying ownership. And you all have in your packets, I put together a comprehensive uh, timeline of the ownership of this company, as well as the current ownership of the company, as well as the, the names and addresses of all of the, uh, for lack of a better term, shareholders of the company. They're really members of an LLC called Aspen Blue, but I, I've provided to the board the the names and addresses of all of the ownership interests in the company. So I'm hopeful that, you know, if you have any questions about the operation or the intended operation or the ownership that we can, between us, we can answer those for you. And, and, and I thank you all for hearing us in these trying times. Um, any questions or comments from the board? Yeah. Uh, Courtney, can I go? Yes. Courtney, Janet, okay. So 
it doesn't bode well that <laughs> who's laughing it doesn't bode i'm sorry. it doesn't bode well that the applicant didn't comply with section 11 of our community host agreement but now you have in spades Thank you, uh, Mr. Zender, for your very complete submission. And to the point where you went above and beyond because you only have to identify people who have an interest in this business up to 10, you know, that you don't have to identify anybody less than 10% and you have done that. And I feel that even though it doesn't bode well that you actually didn't read something you'd signed and remembered it, I'm being awful. I apologize, um, that if this information is all accurate, it gives us what we need to know as to who's liable and even to the point beyond what we requested in the community host agreement. So I appreciate that. Um, you answered my main question, which was, has this change in ownership been approved at the state level, I think, but maybe you didn't. Uh, can you repeat the answer if you did already through you uh, uh, to Ben? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Yes, please. Uh, we it has not yet been approved by the by the by the CCC because they don't have the application for them to review yet. So once we receive the certification form from the town then um, counsel for the applicant is actually ready with this package to submit through the portal to the CCC. And the CCC will, in the same way that they make investigations of, of alcoholic beverage control licenses through the ABCC, they will vet and review all of the um, owners of, of interest in the company and in the license, you know, uh, and as, you, as I believe someone just stated, any change of an interest of 10% or more is required to be um, identified to the, to the CCC. Uh, whenever that happens, so so the, the short answer is it will be reviewed by the CCC as soon as we submit the license application. Yes, and uh, so what I just heard you say is that at no point prior to this, you haven't submitted anything to the CCC up until no the license no. Okay, thank you. The license is the license is not complete until we receive that that certification form from the town, and then it can be submitted. Thank you. CCC is the thank last. You to receive everything and they they do the vetting of the whole of the whole application if that's a quick way of saying it uh, any other comments from the board questions justina and then mike okay justina um hi ben thanks for coming Hello, tonight Gina. um gee this is a a, a, a quite the cast of characters uh, that keeps changing. Um, can you give a little background on why that is? I, I can. If the board looks at the, um, at the, the ownership timeline that I've submitted, the, the December 14, 2018 ownership was the last change of ownership. And just for the board's information, I, I received a request from the town administrator in April of 2019 for this information. And in June of 2019, I submitted to the town an updated ownership list. And I and I then had a meeting with Mr. Hort after that and, and asked him if we were okay. And he suggested to me that 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 we were okay at that point. So I don't I don't think I was completely remiss in, in notifying the town what was going on. But when we submitted the HCA certification request in early March, um, the town administrator came back and asked for additional information and and I went and updated it again and if the board looks at that timeline you'll see that the, the corporation was formed in November of 2017 um, and the officers during that period were really placeholder officers because there really was no permitting in place there were no leases in place there was nothing really in place to to get this license the Medeiros family Andrew Medeiros um, and the Maduro's family trust and, and, and two of the present shareholders, Patrick Case and Nicholas Salvador, as of December of 2018, were the owners of this company. But what happened was the Maduro's family wanted to be out of this particular location and operation. And Patrick Casey um, 
and Nicholas Salvador wanted to stay on. And so what they did was they went out and obtained funding. And as you look at the membership list of the of Aspen Blue LLC, those are the people that contributed the funding to 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 buy out the Medeiros family and to and to continue to operate this. Just so the board understands, you know, there's a limitation on the number of licenses that any one individual or entity can hold in the state. It's three licenses. And there's also different investment entities want to concentrate in different areas at different times based on the permitting status of, of the application. So the underlying ownerships of these licenses tend to change over time based on those factors. So there was a, a sale or a transfer of this ownership earlier this year from the Medeiros family to, to, to Patrick Casey and Nick Salvador and their shareholders. And if you look at that timeline, you'll see that, that changing of those families. There has been continuity of ownership with Patrick Casey and Nicholas Salvador in this operation through this time, though. So, there, and there will be, I have to tell you, I'm guessing in the future, there will be also will be ownership changes as this moves along. And what I can, I can offer to the, to the town possibly is just that maybe we just file with the town an annual statement of ownership. You know, maybe we can set a date that we would, we would update this and provide you with the information so that you have on an ongoing basis um, notification of the owners. Ben, that was really that helpful. Yep. That was really helpful, but it would have been clearer to me if it would have been explained um, before we voted on um, the agreement that we could expect, uh, I think your phrase was um, ownership, uh, that the owners can only own a certain number of licenses, that we could expect uh, a lot of change change going on because that, none of that I recall from when they came before us and told us that they had a deep commitment to mar medical marijuana and there's cancer stories and stuff. I mean, I think it would have been, been I would have felt uh, that things have been more straightforward if this had been maybe explained a little clear before we voted. Um, I hear what you're saying and I know there's limits to what the board can do now, but um, you know, the, it, I'm not used to seeing this much change in corporate, uh, in, in president and CEO and so forth go on on such a short period of time. What's a permitting and licensing consultant that David Miller now is doing um, on 2000, now as of December 14th, 2018, he came before us as the CEO, but you said that was a placeholder. Now he's showing up as a licensing consultant. What does that mean? Well, he, he, he stayed on in his capacity with, you know, there, during the transitional phase, he stayed on during that transition, transitional period to assist him with that transition. But he, you know, he moves again, like people that are in this industry, he, he, he moved on to another project. And so he, he's not listed anymore because he's not involved anymore. So, and he, and he did a, he did a great job at what he did, which was to getting this moving, getting this up and running, identifying locations, doing the things that he did with his company. So, now that you know the operations company is, is is being managed by you know Patrick Casey who's on the line and and, and Nick Salvador who's on the line and, and Matt Wilkes who's on the line. So are you saying um, that his it, job it, is to come get the license, um, say he was the CEO, and then when the approvals were in place, step down and hand on the baton and possibly go do that in another community? No, I'm I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is Mr. Miller has he has relationships with different people. He had a relationship with. Uh, the Maduro's family. He and you know, look, these are very, these are very fluid situations. You know, and they try to put the best people they can in different positions to maximize, you know, the efficiency of this operation. I'll give you an example. Cumberland Farms just sold two years ago. You know, nobody in Wealthy knew the Cumberland Farms sold to a large, a large, you know, out-of-state corporation. There's going to be changes in, in this, but you know, I think what's important for this board is that the entity is going to stay the same. And, you know, if there's any, and there will always be on file with the town, the manager of this property. And if the, if the board has any concerns about how it's being managed or operated, you know, we're receptive to that. And you always know where to find me as well. So, but, you know, changes, you know, is going to happen and, and, you know, we'll keep you as updated as you want us to keep you updated. So. happens. Janet, can I go next? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm leaving the board, uh, Mr. Zender, so this, this won't be on my plate. 
But I want to make a statement here that says, you know, the cannabis business is new to Wellfleet. And this board and future boards of selectmen and in the town administrator want to know who they're doing business with. And this, this particular business has changed hands like musical chairs so many times, we don't know who we're dealing with. But when we, when we gave an original community host agreement to this group, we met them personally. We interviewed them. We talked to them. We established that they would have some deep roots and feeling for the community. This means nothing. So um, there's nothing we can do about it now. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. But in the future, I hope this board, when they get into the business of giving out host agreements to people that want to do marijuana in the town of Wellfleet, meet them, know who they are, trust them, and do your homework. Thank you. I think Kathleen's saying the same thing that Justina said, and, and I agree with it that, uh, you know, Physically, the uh, three years ago or two and a half years ago, you came before our board and those are the people we met and we got to see you. And then in between, it changed. In our new regulations, we've had, um, we've had an amended regulation saying that we do want to hear from every um, host community agreement that when the board changes, when the presidents change when the, when the licensing consultant changes that they have to come, they physically have to come before us and let us know of that change. So as Kathleen said, we, you fall under the pre-existing uh, rule. So, um, but it would be nice. It is, we're local, we're a small local town and we want to, we, we want to know who's doing business with us, you know? So anybody else, Mike or Helen, have anything to say? Do. Mike does, and then there's one public comment. Okay. Um, so first of all, it's under my uh, understanding that there was no actual violation of section 11 here because the company remained the company. It didn't assign, sublet, or transfer any of its rights or delegates under the obligations. Uh, we live in a, a capitalist society. So if you have a corporation and that corporation has sold its, uh, has, has basically uh, changed hands, the corporation and the entity still remains the same. So there's not really anything in any of our new policies that can stop this from happening either because essentially we're licensing a company. That company's structure, ownership, um, doesn't change but the ownership of it does and we have no control over that we can't do that with any business in town uh like uh ben, like uh, uh ben zender had said um cumberland farms just sold to a massive corporation in the uk they're expanding globally we have no control over that because it's still cumberland farms i know we have more control over the marijuana thing but in the end we're a capitalist country. If a company sells ownership stake, there's nothing we can do about it. And um, and I don't think there's anything we can do about it in our current one, but I appreciate them coming before the board. Um, and, and um, you know, uh, speaking before us um, and everything still has to go through zoning and stuff like that. But I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm misreading this, but um, that's, Ben would that's probably know it. best. We're just saying that in our in our amended host community agreement that we want when the names of the corporation change and the addresses change, we just want to be notified. It doesn't mean we're going to deny anything. We just want to be notified, especially after three years when it's changed four times. So yeah. No, they. Um, so the yeah. new, so sorry, Madam Chair. The, nope. the new not the new policy requires them to come before us when there's ownership changes. Is that what it is? That's uh, it would be nice if they came before us. You know, they're just supposed to notify us. You know that 
the corporation has changed uh, names, ownership, and uh, location. You know, it's just, yeah. But no, this is, yeah. Does that clarify anything? Sure, yeah. I was this just referring- fall under our new, our new regulation. I was just referring to Helen saying that they had lapsed in, in violation of section 11. Yeah, no, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I don't You're believe right. that they did do that in any way. So no, they haven't. I to point that out, that they are, they are in full compliance. Yes, they are. Um, uh, any other questions or comments? Attorney Zender has his hand raised, so I'm gonna let him go. And then okay. um, one question from the public. Okay. Go ahead, I, Ben. Yeah, not through you, Madam Chair. First of all, I'd like to correct a couple of things. When we came in front of the board for the amendment of the HCA, I brought with me Nick Salvador, who's still the treasurer um, and a director and a shareholder of this company. So he was here way back at that point. Um, secondly, I did, again, I did provide the board after it was requested through the town administrator an updated list. And I was informed that that was all I needed to do. And so okay. I, what I would suggest going forward is, you know, there's an obligation by the applicant to the CCC to inform the CCC of the ownership of the change of any ownership of 10% or more. I would suggest that maybe the board just request that we simultaneously inform the board anytime there's a filing with the CCC that changes, you know, an ownership of 10% or more of the company. That way you're kept apprised in real time of changes in ownership. And if you feel that you want us to come back before you um, based on those filings, we're, we're happy to come in whenever you want. Okay. I mean, I, you know, it's not coming before us and re-arguing or something. It's just, Letting us know, you know, we're a small town. We like to know who owns what businesses and we like to know people. And it's really just sure. a matter of informing this small town that you're requesting a host community agreement from just to let us know when things change. And it doesn't affect this, this uh, application at all. But yeah, and you did the right Thank thing. You. Thank you. You did the right thing. And now it's Thank just you all. You know, where we, we require it now that we're updated annually and thank you so anybody else um yep uh timothy sayer from the audience has a uh question a comment if you'd like me to take it sure okay tim you're unmuted thank you oh and good evening it's nice to see all of you again I'm I'm so sad i can't be up there right now oh you're still in florida uh, yeah, well, shelter in place. Uh, yeah, okay, good, thank you. Yeah, um, it's basically a couple questions for um, Ben. The Madeiras Family Trust, is that the Madeiras Family Trust that was located in California? I can't, I can't answer that question, I don't know that. Okay, is it, was it set up by, right. was it set up by the, Madeira, by the law firm Madeiras in California? No, I don't know. No, I cannot. I, my uh, this is patrick casey no that's uh, no that was not it's a family trust that was set up by burns and levinson in boston okay but is it the dearest family that uh was out of california no no they're uh they're out of truro okay thank you and the david miller that's um the licensing agent is he also the same licensing agent that's trying to get the license through falmouth at this time under the name of david miller I don't, I don't know what he's doing. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Okay. Do you know if he lives in Palm Beach Gardens? Yes, he does. Okay. Be wary. Be very wary. Thank you very much. So for everybody out there that um, I talked with the Cape Cod Commission last month and they, they're the ones that do all the vetting and research. And um, we're just here to tell them that yes, if they follow certain procedures and do everything right, that they can go before the other boards to get an agreement to have a host, to have a um, business here. We're just giving them the initial go ahead. They still have a lot to go through. Madam Chair, may I make a motion? You may. I move to approve the transfer of rights for Nature's Alternative to Aspen Blue LLC. Is there a second? Madam Chair? Yes. There if I may speak. 
Well, yeah, this is Ben I, Bender. It's I, I want to know if there's a second. Is anybody raising their hand, Courtney? I, I, I have a question. <sighs> All right. So, what? My question is, do we have to approve a transfer? And do we do we approve this transfer? I mean, the, a transfer of rights. Do we need well, to have a motion at all? I mean, they, they've already transferred their right. They, because they're still the same company, Nature's Alternative, they're yeah. not changing the name of their company, right? I mean, right. I don't think that we have any, I don't think that we have any reason to approve this. Um, say that again, Mike, we don't have any right to disapprove it. We, yeah, we don't have to approve it because there's still nature's alternative. The company that owns that, the company that is operating in Wellfleet is still going to be nature's alternative, not Aspen Blue. Is that correct? No. That is correct. That is correct. Yeah. So, that, yeah. Right. I, I agree. I mean, I don't know why. I just, uh, is Mr. Hort there? Did he sneak out again? No, he's here. Okay. I'm here. So legally, we don't really have to approve a transfer, right? Or do we? Because they didn't change. Hang on one second. I'm looking up something here. Yeah, I'm trying to do it too as we talk. Madam Chairwoman. Yes. This is Ben Zender. I, I, I do believe that your your host community agreement has a line that says that any change in ownership of the applicant requires notification to this board and, and, and approval. I'm not sure what that means, but we're not seeking to transfer this license or this HCA from Nature's Alternative to anybody else, but there is a change in the underlying stock ownership in Nature's Alternative. So we would be grateful if the board would approve that That's by fine. motion. Thank you. I was trying to look for that while talking. Uh, yes, Mr. Zender. So, Madam Chair, Chair yeah, thank you. I've had my hand up for a while. Um, a couple things. I, uh, I don't see your hand up. Okay, so yes, no, um, I was speaking to Courtney. I'm sorry. Let me just go it, Helen, but you keep muting yourself. Well, yeah. Okay. Continue. Thank you. Um. One of us has spoken of trust. Um, I have no way of knowing, although I'm always optimistic. People are innocent, if you will, until they're proven guilty. I would trust people. But I have no way of knowing if somebody shows up who isn't going to be, let's say, the manager of the business. <coughs> it's nice to see somebody's face. I have no way of knowing if a business is trustworthy. All I care about is that the information for contact is accurate. And then we'll see how we do. And I just wanna thank this business, the people in this business for wanting to come to Wellfleet and open a dispensary and establishment. Um, I don't think anybody's done that. I appreciate that you want to do business here and I look forward to it going well and everybody acting honorably. Um, I feel that it was a good idea to have every piece of information we could about the new, shall we say, membership of owners of shareholders. We could argue about what ownership means. You know, there are legal definitions of it, but Basically, now with this document from Ben, we have a very complete way of knowing how to get in touch with you, who's involved, and I'm perfectly happy not to get an annual notification of any changes. I mean, of not to get an annual notification, but only to get a notification if there's a change, such as has happened recently. Thank you. So there was a motion made um, and it should stand. Uh, was there a second? No, can I, I, can, I second uh, and make an amendment? Uh, all right, what's the amendment? Kathleen, we have to get it right. Is, I, I would move okay, what's to- What's the amendment? Move to approve the transfer of ownership of nature's alternative 
to Aspen Blue LLC because we're not transferring any rights to Aspen Blue. We're transferring, in my opinion, we don't have to do this at all, but I'm not a lawyer. But we definitely, they're not asking to transfer their rights from one company to another. They're asking to transfer, they're asking for a transfer of ownership, which I, we don't have I the- hear I hear you. Mr. Zender, what do you have to say about that? I think Mr. DeVasso is correct. I mean, okay. what we're really, really, we're just looking for you to approve the ownership as it is now so that the town administrator can sign the certification form so that we can go forward with the license. Okay. So I think the amendment that Mr. DeVasso put forward is, is, is appropriate. Okay. So to reiterate or to clarify, uh, Mike DeVasso moved to approve the transfer of ownership for Nature's Alternative to Aspen Blue LLC. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Kathleen, aye. Justina? Aye. I abstain. You're abstaining. Okay. Uh, Mike? Michael, aye. And Janet, aye. Uh, motion passes for four yeas, one abstain. Thank you. Thank you all so much. For Thank time. you guys for being patient. Thanks. Although I'm assuming everybody. Thank you very much. Nice and comfortable at home rather than. <laughs> and uh, you didn't travel far to come to this meeting, I hope. Yeah. All right. No, we're not. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. So now okay, we move night. on to the annual town meeting and town election. First is to request to postpone annual town meeting until a later date. Um, what, any uh, discussion? Comment? Yes. Helen? Yeah, so I read carefully the town administrator's comment and was also privy to an exchange, a useful exchange between him and the town moderator, Dan Silverman, about all these issues. And the most important thing for me is that we address in the best possible way these certain articles which have a time sensitive and practical um, purpose. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, the water system upgrade, the clarification of High Toss Road, the operating budget, you know. And although I had a very fruitful conversation with somebody much more experienced than I am in town meeting. Harry Turkanian. I feel that we need to do this sooner than later, and that the fall may be just as dangerous for large gatherings as the spring. And that we will be facing the same number of problems. The difference will be we will be more used to this situation. I feel that there are difficulties in doing what we would do with the budget, which is we get to spend, you know, a twelfth of it every year, every month, you know, if we don't approve this budget. And I was really hoping that we could have a way of voting on paper, like we do with absentee ballots, not only for the special election which legally every single person in town could vote as an absentee, completely legal. We wouldn't have to even go into a polling place. We could just do it. I would like to see that happen for these articles at least. And I bet more people would vote than the people that show up and provide a quorum at town meeting. I bet we would get a higher percentage of votes. What we wouldn't get, and this is the downside, and we'd get them in time for these practical needs. What we wouldn't get would be the kind of discussion, the magic of town meeting where people come in, even if they've informed themselves and then something else happens at the meeting. And I'm gonna throw this out there. So this morning, there were 95 people at the Zoom meeting, okay? And 
I have to say that I think we could do town meeting on Zoom. I'm not kidding. Mm -mm. We and we There's could have our discussion yeah. there. Yeah. And the only problem would be figuring out how to vote. But guess what? This is already going to be happening for big meetings anyway. And I'd like to remind everybody that sometimes we just have like a hundred and I forget what the quorum is now. Danny told me the other day, I've now forgotten it, but it's a hundred something. And I would like to have town meeting on a big Zoom meeting and a formal way of the moderator recognizing people just the way he always does. And to take care of these pressing issues that we have to take care of and wait until it's safe for us to all be in the same room again for anything that isn't absolutely necessary. That's where I am right now, but I wanna to listen to what everybody else says. So I think the motion is to postpone, vote to postpone town meeting and to choose a date. And for me, the idea of postponing it until later is so that every town in the Commonwealth is facing these same issues and everybody's working it out. And I think it's um, uh, by the fall, we'll get it worked out. So, um, and I agree that everybody should be able to hear the comments and the discussion and the, um, of each article. Um, but this is just a request to postpone annual town meeting till a later date. To me, that's to give us more time. And yeah, so um, you can discuss whether it's going to be Zoom. That's a Zoom is I think Zoom's a different format than they would use. But yeah, so who wants to uh, throw out a date and move Janet? To phone it? Yes. Um, I just, Kathleen, I just want to say a couple of things, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, uh, Helen, through you, Madam Chair, to Helen, this really isn't about the method, about how we do town meeting right now. As Janet just stated, it's more about postponing it. But I'm also going to suggest that it, at this point, um, what would go really well um, over a Zoom um, meeting is to engage the Wealthly Community Forum in a pre-town meeting to go to address some of the issues that you're discussing, Helen, in a Zoom format. So that if, if you do a mail-in ballot, people have, will have had a chance to have had a discussion via the Community Forum uh, platform on some of the, um, the articles. Um, but I do have a date written down and a time. So if I can make that motion, you guys can think about it. The, you the ready town, for that, Janet? The town moderator and Harry are both on with the, their hands raised, Janet, just so you know. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll wait to hear from them. Um, and we could also possibly, along with it being a forum, is have it on local TV so more people would have access Right. And and then and then we vote. But yes, who wants to go first, Mr. Moderator or Mr. X moderator? Um, well, the current moderator, Silverman, has had his hand up first, so I'll, I'll unmute okay. him. Um, OK, go ahead, Dan. Yes. Good evening, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, a couple of thoughts. Um, first, to Helen's point um, and, and uh, to the uh, discussions that um, the board has had by a memo with, with uh, the town administrator, Dan Hort. With all due respect, um, a mail-in ballot at the moment is not a legal way of conducting town meeting. Now, I know uh, uh, Mr. Hort has asked our uh, legislators to, to legislators rather, to look into whether that there's special legislation that might make that possible. At the moment, though, that's not that's not an option for us. So the options that are available to us are trying to come up with some technological solution uh, to holding town meeting uh, before the end of the fiscal year or to use the uh, alternatives that have been given to us by the legislature now, uh, which um, Helen referred to of um, spending uh, based on last year's budget uh, and push the town meeting to sometime in the future when we may have uh, a clear idea of whether or not it's safe to meet. I have a problem with trying to conduct town meeting um, via a, a Zoom platform or some other kind of electronic format. For one thing, um, these things, 
work best as a one-way uh, presentation kind of discussion. They're not really well geared uh, toward the kind of back and forth that takes place at town meeting. For, this, for, the, for another, um, they disadvantage people who aren't technologically savvy uh, and have the ability to be comfortable with these kind of, uh, these kind of uh, formats. You had, you had something close to 100 people uh, participating in this morning's uh, Zoom meeting. Most of those people were passive participants watching the meeting. Town meeting uh, by design is not a passive activity. And we're not talking about 100 people, we're talking about a minimum of about 175, which is our quorum. Um, I, I think it would be extremely difficult to manage. I think it would be extremely difficult to try to count the votes uh, in some fashion. Uh, and I think it's, I, I don't think it's the best solution available to us. I'm, I will do what the board wants if they call a town meeting. Clearly my obligation is to moderate it uh, and to try to work out a forum to do it. Uh, my recommendation to the board is that we set a date uh, in the early fall. I was looking at September 15th, which is the first Monday after Labor Day. Meanwhile, the state allows us to spend um, not less than one twelfth of the prior year's budget in each of the go months going forward. Um, my understanding is that the, the crucial time sensitive issues, um, the town is being given more, more time on that. Um, so I don't see the urgency to try to come up with some kind of a, 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 an improvised, um, improvised forum, which does not really meet the requirements of town meeting, which involves full participation, full debate uh, by all parties. So um, this, this uh, motion or this request is just to change the date. I understand. And then hopefully by the time we get the date changed, uh, other towns, the governor, uh, we will have help in figuring out how to have, have it a combination yeah. of forum and this and that. So um, yeah, so what, so uh, Danny just threw out September 15th. Now we'll hear from uh, Miss. Are you done, Dan? Uh, the, yes, I am. Thank you, you Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Turkanian. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to sort of reemphasize what Dan has said, one of the things that you get from a town meeting that doesn't show up in the records anywhere is it allows the town to build a consensus and to take ownership of the decisions that are made. And I, I think that that's very valuable. Uh, I'm really uncomfortable with the idea of a mail-in vote because uh, the mechanics really limit the ability to fine tune uh, a vote to adjust to circumstances. Uh, for example, uh, a flawed zoning proposal might best be referred back to the planning board rather than voted up or down. Uh, and with respect to the budget, uh, Dan is correct that the statute allows a town to spend not less than one twelfth of its uh, current annual budget subject to uh, Department of Revenue approval and subject to available uh, funding uh, going forward. So there is a mechanism to uh, deal with the day-to-day -day financial operations of the town. And in fact, it's a mechanism that's been in place in this Commonwealth. In fact, uh, was the normal order of operations back in the 70s when uh, towns had a calendar year fiscal year and didn't hold town meetings until February or March of the following year. Right. So uh, there's been a track record of successful operation that way. I understand that it's a fluid situation, that there's a lot that we don't know and that circumstances can change either with respect to the pandemic or with respect to you know, emergency financial requirements, but we can address those as they, as they uh, arise. So I'd encourage you to uh, consider seriously postponing this until sometime in the fall and hopefully we will know more and be better able to, to deal with it. Thank you. Just to clarify, uh, you're saying postponing this meeting town meeting date or postponing us discussing it until the fall? No, postponing, I'm suggesting postponing the date. As a practical okay. matter, it takes you about five weeks to get the warrant printed and mailed. So if you don't make a decision, you're 
you now you really have run out of time anyway. So I suggest that you uh, postpone the date of the annual town meeting to uh, to a date in the fall. And I don't have any particular um, reason to disagree with the proposal Dan put forward. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I was I was going to go with something like September 21st or 28th, just to give us even more time to um, if if people need to get settled after the busy summer season. But um, do you guys want to just say postpone to the fall, or do we want to? I would I would prefer making a date of say September. If, oh, I'm sorry. Well, if it's a Monday, it'd be the 21st or the 28th. Oh, Janet, I have it for September the 15th at Danny's suggestion. Okay. Uh, who prefers the 15th or the 22nd? We've gone to a, a Tuesday rather than a Monday. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Tikanian, for your reminder about the five weeks. I think that we do not want to be thinking about the warrant in the last few weeks of August because it's going to be different this year, but it's not going to be less trouble. And I think that we should have it be, let's say, in the second week of October, right? We're not going to have, unfortunately, Oyster Fest. And I think that that is a safer time, a more secure time. And that the preparation for the warrant, which everybody on this board is very aware of how much trouble that is, should happen after, start happening in a serious way after Labor Day. Um, it should definitely, in my opinion, not happen in the middle of September. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, uh, I, uh, Mike, Justina, is that Mike? Oh, does Justina have something? No, just you, Mike, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the initial date I thought was October 5th or October 6th. I wasn't sure if it should be, do we usually do it on Monday? Yes. Yeah, so I guess October 5th would have been, that's the week before Columbus Day. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like we'll push it back kind of, I don't want to have to push it back again. We might have to even at that date. And I, I just, for some reason, I feel like, October seems to be the right month to hold it as far as, you know, okay. going into a change of season, a real change of season. And how does everybody a, feel, including uh, Dan and Harry? How do you guys feel about October 5th, Monday, October 5th? D Dan Silverman said to me in the chat that he is not wedded to that date of September 15th. Hmm. Okay. Wedded to it. Okay. Must have been all the talk about weddings on property right now. Um, right. What? Uh, Madam Chair, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, late, late, later is better. What? Uh, I, I would agree that later is better. I okay. was suggesting um, September 15th only because my sense was that the board was anxious to get this done. But I think the later, okay. the later it is, the more clarity we might have in terms of what the situation is. So. Okay. I agree. Now, did he, did, okay. Um, Are you ready for a motion, Janet? Yes. In accordance uh, with section. Janet, hold on. What? Okay, Justine has got to go. Um, I'm a little confused here because we're saying that we can hold it in the fall, but we also had some discussion tonight about how difficult it's right. going to be going forward because of COVID. So, are we just going to table the idea of the format and assume that if it happens in October, we'll deal with the format if COVID doesn't let us assemble. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to research how to have, have it, you know, we'll have to see what other towns are doing. And um, yeah, you know, they'll, yes, we'll discuss how we can, okay, thanks. but that's why October 5th would be a better date to, to extend it that far. Uh, Mr. Chikanian, do you have yeah. anything to say about October 5th? Uh, I, I do. I, I just would encourage you not to look at a date beyond that. And the reason why I say that is I'm a member of the Nauset Regional School District's building committee. And when the town meetings, the spring town meeting started to get uh, being postponed, 
uh, the committee went to the Mass School Building Authority and asked for an extension. And uh, we received an extension to November 1st to resolve the, um, the funding issue for that project. And while it is possible that there may be further extensions if situations warranted, at this point, if we can't resolve that, the, the funding issue one way or the other by November 1st, uh, that project is uh, in uncertain uh, territory. So October 5th is fine. I would not encourage you to consider much, much beyond that for that reason. Also, October 5th will give you, um, gee, almost six months to try and figure out what the alternatives are if that date is not possible because of uh, the, the current medical situation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So yeah, can I have a motion for? Uh, uh, Janet, I just have one question. Um, <laughs> is um, Mike Travato out there, Courtney? Um, yes, he is. I'm, I'm going to unmute him. Um, Janet, through you to Mike Travato. Yes. Go ahead, Mike. Um, Mike, this is Kathleen. Um, does this affect um, the water uh, for the RFP for? 95 Lawrence Road, going to uh, October 5th. Uh, it moves things back, Kathleen. Uh, it just it just really just moves the timeline back on everything. Nothing that's insurmountable. Thank you. Okay, I can make a motion, Janet. Hey, good, thank you. In accordance with section 2-6-1 of the Wellfleet Charter and in light of the Select Board's March 17th emergency declaration regarding the COVID-19 virus. I move to rescind the vote of the March 24th, 2020, which set June 1st, 2020 as the date of the Wellfleet Annual Town Meeting. Schedule the Wellfleet Annual Town Meeting for October the 5th at 6 p.m. Uh, Helen second. All in favor say aye. Helen, aye. Kathleen, aye. Christina, aye. Michael, aye. And Janet, aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, thank you to the board. I think it's a wise decision. Good. Thank you for your input. Uh, okay, so now moving on to the election. Anybody have comments? I'm sure everybody has comments, right? <laughs> what have we got here? Postpone the annual town election to a Monday in June. Um, and this, you know, I, I have yet to see the full warrant, but um, I don't think we have anybody, there's no contested races as far as I know. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, it's on the website. One site. Excuse me, Justina. That was Courtney. And the warrant is on the website, and and the clerk has, I believe, she sent you the the election ballot. No, we don't have it yet. No, we don't. Okay. Have well, it. either way, there's no contested races. So, um, so to me, and if Mr. Turkanian's still on, and and Danny, I would think we would be able to do this by a mail-in vote, by an absentee val ballot, since there's nothing contested. Do you guys have any comments on that? Mr. Tikanian still there? Okay. Then um, Dan if, is on. So Dan Hort is on. Okay, Dan. <coughs> and sorry, I just put a piece of ice cream in my mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! <laughs> what um, flavor? <laughs> chocolate peanut butter. Whoa! So the, the video. Oh, you're a bad boy, Danny. Oh no, he's a good At this boy. Time, there isn't a provision to do mail-in only. Oh, that's right. We would, that's right. We Sorry. would encourage everybody to do mail-in or absentee ballot prior to the day. So we would work very hard to publicize and ask people to vote by mail-in ballot or absentee ballot. Okay. So, um, is there a suggestion for the date? Madam yeah, Chair. Janet, I have that. Okay. Oh, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Helen. Yeah, sorry, Kathleen. Um, 
one of the things we often vote on, besides people being elected to positions, that's often the least of it. We vote on Prop two and a half, we vote on a number of different things. And it's, it's always, the election always because of that comes right after town meeting because that full and fair discussion that Harry very eloquently um, described, I just said it was magic, is really important for people to vote at the special election. So I know Kathleen, that this might inconvenience you and I don't, that's not a happy thing for me to think about, but um, through you, Madam Chair, to Dan Hort, what on the warrant would we have to be voting on also in the ballot at the special election? Um, I'm thinking about this right now. So any of your overrides could definitely yeah. wait until the fall because we have um, the Outer Cape Town managers, we're talking about this. Um, there is most likely with the school um, election, we would hold a special election at the state at the same time there is a state election. Mm -hmm. So we can't, we can't put them all on the same ballot, but you can have two separate ballots that are voted on at the same time. So all of those items that would normally be an override can wait until the fall. I don't think there's, there's a, a couple of um, petitioned ballot questions right now. I don't think there is anything that allows us to postpone those. So those petitioned ballot questions would have to go on, but anything that is a debt exclusion or an override can wait until the fall. Okay, and just to clarify, did I hear you just say that the added expense of having two special elections, because we need to do that, the second one we're going to be doing anyway? It would be minimal because we added on to another election exactly. that's already scheduled. And what is that date, the date for that other election? You know what, I have to look it up. It's sometime in early September. So it would come before town meeting. Yes. So we would be voting on ballot questions. Either we'd be paying for three special elections, one after our town meeting, if we get to have it on October 5th, one, the one in September, and one, the one on in June. Um, again, Coupling the two this in September might save money, but again, we wouldn't have had a really good conversation about, you know, these articles that then need to get voted on at the special election too. And I'm going to go with supporting what Harry said. I think it's really important that people understand fully what they're voting on. So I would I would just wait and have one special election after our town meeting in October, if we get to have it. That, that's what would make sense to me if we really care about there being a full and fair discourse about it. Any other questions or comments? I do. Uh, no. I'm not sure, I'm, this is Dan Hort real quickly. I'm not sure I understood Helen completely what she was saying, but the you have to have the special elect you have to have the regular town election sometime in june because, it's a mass general law helen yeah, yes there, and, nothing has allowed us nothing has allowed us to postpone that um what you what you can postpone to the fall and i just found out there's a state primary on tuesday september the first what you can postpone until September the 1st is you can postpone any ballot questions um, that deal with an override or a debt exclusion. Those could be postponed to September 1st, but they would then be held prior to town meeting. Madam Chair? 
Yes, Mr. Silverman. Dan Silverman. Um, uh, just to, to Helen's point, uh, with, and with all due respect, Helen, I agree absolutely that town meeting discusses these uh, questions completely, um, but historically, far more people vote at the ballot on the election, which comes normally a week after the town meeting, uh, than come to town meet, meeting. And most of those people are making that vote without having had the benefit of uh, the discussion at town meeting. I mean, I don't like that it's that way, having been a proponent of various articles over the year uh, when I was a department head. Um, I knew that I had to convince people who didn't hear the arguments that went on at town meeting. But the reality is a lot of people um, make up their mind on these overrides and debt exclusions without ever having heard any of the debate that takes place at town meeting. And it's not a given uh, that the election has to take place after the town meeting. In many towns, in fact, they do take place before and the debt exclusions and override votes um, can take place before the actual town meeting um, as long as the town meeting happens within a reasonable uh, time frame. It's not necessarily the best way to do it, um, and, and, but it's, it's not uncommon for towns to, to, to have their election before they have their town meeting. I agree with you that the, the full and fair discussion uh, may not have happened, but for a lot of people who vote at town election, that hasn't happened anyway. They haven't taken part in that discussion anyway. I, 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 perhaps we shouldn't encourage it, but if it's a matter of timing and a matter of practicality, uh, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Danny, I'm smiling because if you remember, that is exactly what I wrote to you and Dan in one of our exchanges in an email. What you just said, every mm -hmm. word of it. So I'm smiling because you didn't give me credit. Anyway, thank you. I agree with that. Uh, the only thing is we would have to make the kind of special effort with the press, with a forum in the summer, awful, um, to let people know about those ballot questions, just to make some effort to inform people, in my opinion. Thank you. Madam Chair. Is that Mike? Yeah. Yep. Um, I just think it's important to do it as, I mean, if we're doing it this way, we need to know what are the logistics for people to get um, mail-in ballots, um, how prepared is the town to, to do that and how long will it take for them to put together um, a program where we'll get as many mail-in ballots out to people as possible. And then we should set that date according to that um, I don't know if Dan's there. Um, the town clerk would probably know, you know, he's been in contact with the town clerk. So um, Dan, if you're there, um, what does that look like right now as far as logistics for getting those out? Any, is it possible to do it June 1st or June 15th? Yep. Any, date, any date you give us in June, we can get it done. I would prefer to do it as early in June as possible because, you know, there's people waiting to uh, assume their their lives as um, elected officials and uh, moving on from this. And um, my recommendation would be the first week of June. Madam Chair. Yes, Kathleen. Kathleen, um, I'm uh, recommending that we have an election the 15th of June, making my last meeting the 9th of June. Um, uh, that would give the incoming person a good solid uh, week and a half um, before their first meeting on the board. Um, my exiting um, any sooner than that, you know, it's just kind of pointless. There's uh, just that first meeting in June to go to the 9th. So the, the election would be the 15th, which is a Monday. Um, and my last board meeting would be Tuesday, June the 9th. Okay, anybody have any other suggestions? So do you want to move the election to uh, June 15th, Monday, June 15th? I can make a motion. 
Okay. In accordance with chapter 45, the acts 2020 for the state of Massachusetts, I move to postpone the Wellfleet town election to June 15th, 2020. <coughs> Second, Helen. Okay, all in favor? Helen, aye. Kathleen, aye. Christina, aye. Michael, aye. And Janet, aye. Okay, thank you. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Um, so tax exemptions and due date extensions. Um, there's a request to move the... Uh, Extending the deadline for applications for the residential tax exempt. Hold on. I just shuffled papers to um, to May first. I understand that there's very few few people that are involved in this, and that they know of the extension. Um, my first thought was that we should extend it longer because May first is only four days away, but three days away, I guess technically. So um, any comments or discussion or can we move the extending the deadline for the application of the residential tax exemption? Okay, um, may I have a motion? I move to approve extending the deadline for the application for residential tax exemption to May 1st, 2020. Ellen second. All in favor? Say aye. Helen, I. Kathleen, I. Christina, I. Michael, I. And Janet, I. Thank you. Um, that unanimously passes. And now moving on to the um, the deadline for property taxes, tax payments from May first to June first. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve extending the deadline for property tax payments from May 1st to June 1st, 2020. Is there a second? Second. Helen, second. Whatever. All in favor, say aye. Helen, aye. Kathleen, aye. Christina, aye. Michael, aye. And Janet, aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Great. Okay, um, select board reports. I have none. Anybody else? Okay. I Ten. have a brief one. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. I have a brief one. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, I did meet with Michelle Isley with SPAT in addition to all the wonderful um, programs they put in place to help the shellfishing community. Uh, they do have some ideas about some interesting virtual type stuff uh, for um, SPAT. So I'll encourage them to come, you know, update the board at a later time. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, moving on to town administrator's report. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't have a uh, written report in this week. Um, was out of the office for a couple of days. Um, my life right now is just these conference calls. Um, it, it's interesting in that the conference calls, you know, it gives you a chance to look and say, wow, maybe we could do things differently sometimes. Because a lot of these conference calls are really helpful and um, really beneficial in the way they operate. Um, I think one of one of the the positives that has come from all of this is the outer cape uh, managers and and administrators along with the seashore are all talking about what we're doing in our individual communities and how it might affect another community so that we're not all over the board and hopefully we we try to make similar decisions so as we have more information from those calls I'll certainly bring it forward to you. Thank you. Any questions? No. Okay. Um, topics for future discussion. No correspondence. No, that always comes late. Somehow correspondence should come before human uh, in my mind. Okay, topics for future discussion. Yeah, Janet, I have two. Okay. May I, Madam Chair? 
You um, I've, I've made a, um, a request through Dan and Courtney uh, for a work meeting with the board and the task force for 95 Lawrence Road uh, for you to oh, review yeah. the final draft of the RFP. Um, I've tentatively scheduled a date of May 5th, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Um, I'm hoping this is convenient for everybody. Uh, it's something I would like to get done before I leave. Um, so Courtney and Dan are working on that. Uh, my second request is a work meeting for Tuesday, May the 12th, so that we can work on a town warrant. Um, there were um, articles um, that had no board or committee recommendations. And while we've inserted them, um, it, I would feel better um, in leaving if we, um, if we were to vet the articles and go over the warrant once again. So I've scheduled that as a work meeting for Tuesday, May the 12th, again at 1 p.m. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Helen. To address uh, Kathleen's idea, I'm right with you on the May 5th meeting. Um, I, I would be up for one work meeting dealing with more than one thing. But in the case of the warrant, the warrant is going to be open over the summer. And you won't be here. You could participate if you wanted to because people who are off the board can be in the audience and say what they want. And they're often very, very useful. But I would rather not do a work meeting on the warrant because our warrant may look quite different by the time we get to it in October. And we will certainly have to have a meeting about it sometime closer to the actual time of town meeting. And, you know, I wouldn't wait on that, but the May 5th one, and we may tag a few more things into that work meeting, I, I'm available for, and gee, if Mike looked at his um, cell phone, he could even check the tide and see if it was okay for him. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, through you to Helen, um, I'm, I'm comfortable with um, leaving May 5th as it is with just the RFP. Look, this is a pretty um, substantial document that you're gonna be looking at and reviewing and um, a lot of work and efforts gone into it. So I think that that should just be our only focus at that meeting on May, May 5th. Um, it's with great sadness that um, I'm leaving uh, the board um, without vetting my last warrant, but um, that that's how it is. Um, I, uh, I don't know what my next stop is on the bus. So, but I, I hear you, Helen, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so um, yes, work meeting. Everybody can, I, can, I can do May 5th at one for that meeting. Um, okay, um, any other future discussions? So I, uh, I definitely think we need to discuss the short-term rental, rental situation um, sooner than later. Um, so uh, my guess is that would get kicked back to like uh, the, the task force. Um, yeah, so, so, okay, so what, what do you mean this short-term rental situation? Are you talking about people renting oh. houses and, and motels and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the governor extended it to May Okay. 18th. That doesn't get us to Memorial Day weekend. Um, and uh, we did, uh, Dan sent an email from this. Is, I should, we're not supposed to be discussing it, but whatever. There was an email from KP Law saying that we have some latitude to extend it. I just would like that to get kicked back to the um, task force and then come before us for discussion at our, at our next meeting. Um, about what we can do about that, potentially pushing it back beyond Memorial Day weekend to buy us a little bit of time into the into the season here. Um, it just doesn't seem like feasible for us to have a huge influx in Memorial Day weekend in, in short-term rentals. I, I 
you know, not, I think, should yeah, be giving my opinion right now. But I would like, I would like by our next meeting, which is just in May twelfth, really recommendations from the uh, task force. You know, should we require everybody like mandate it? Can we mandate that mandate that people wear masks? Um, I mean, we really need to have some uh, st suggestions in place in two weeks. So I agree with the short term rentals. I think the uh, people who, who rent and I think the Chamber of Commerce needs to really weigh in heavily on what we're supposed to do. And how do we define short-term rentals? Is that a weekend or is it a one week, two weeks? They're all included. So I agree. Um, yeah. But it, so should the whole um, task force come before us and we send our suggestions or questions to them ahead? I think we can meet those uh, task force meetings are usually, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Courtney, they're usually uh, advertised as uh, post to select board meetings is that right no so so we haven't they are and they aren't but the the emergency management team calls that happen on tuesdays at 10 a.m are for the public if there are items you want the task force the team to work on separately we have our own calls where we discuss things and those things get brought to the 10 a.m calls the 10 a.m calls on tuesdays are strictly information for the public so dan okay. and I, I think we're having a call tomorrow just the team a staff meeting we can bring this to them Okay. okay. I would like a recommendation and I'd like that on the next agenda for us to discuss. Okay. There's, yeah. there's questions coming to me in the chat about this. If you, if you want me to read them, I can, but I think these are all questions that will be, to, to, will be answered later on. Yeah. This is just topics. I, I'm going to just pump, jump in here. It's just, you know, I think also this is needed because um, people have signed leases, uh, there's there's uh, contracts in place for many rentals. The real estate agents, uh, the real estate agencies are not necessarily letting people out of those contracts. Would yeah. like to cancel. Um, and it came up tonight that residents are asking, "What do I do if I have a renter?" Um, they may not. I mean, there's there's even legal there's contractual reasons that this needs to start being dealt with because these these are contracts between renters and. Um, and owners or rent renters and uh, real estate agencies. So I, th I think it's good to start talking about it because it's a complex issue. Madam Chair. Yes, Helen. Yes, so um, yes, we should discuss this at our next meeting. It's very time sensitive, but what I liked is that every meeting we have now, we have a COVID-19 update and Tonight's meeting had two very clear uh, sort of subsections of that agenda item, but we need that topic to be open enough so that anything that's related to COVID-19 can be brought up because very often what's happening again and again in these exchanges we're having, and this happens at the EMT meetings too, one thing impact something else. And that also has to be looked at before we can make a decision. So can we somehow have the COVID-19 agenda items described generally enough, even if there's some specific details that are at, you know, put in there under that agenda title so that we can consider things carefully together and don't have to bounce it to a next meeting? Uh We've done this in other ways and other times, and it's just to keep it legal and just so that people know we're going to be discussing everything COVID. <laughs> um, it's but I want to allow Mike's suggestion of just specifically discussing short term rentals as a COVID 19 agenda item or a separate agenda item. <clears throat> it's a biggie. Yeah. Is that what you were uh, saying, Mike? Oh, yeah, that should be its own agenda item. But also, I mean, what my technical question here is COVID-19 update as an agenda item, would that not give us just the latitude to discuss anything under COVID-19? Or yeah. maybe we should put COVID-19 discussion and select board recommendations or something like that? I don't know. Madam Chair, COVID-19. Um, no. Hold on, I haven't recognized you. Um, the, th the suggestion 
uh, by a professional on running these kinds of uh, phone conference calls <clears throat> is that you are more specific when you can be uh, because it's difficult to read. You know, it's difficult to see things. We don't have um, visuals. So I think that the short-term rental is important enough that that should have its own item. And the other COVID-19, unless somebody suggests it in the next two weeks, just the updates and questions would be separate. But short-term rental should definitely have its own agenda. Madam and, Chair? Yes. Yeah, I wasn't suggesting it wouldn't be fully identified. I was simply saying it would be within the agenda item as we have it here on our agenda tonight. So enough said. I'm agreeing with Mike that we need to uh, deal with it at our next meeting. Thank yes, you. It's very important. Okay, anything else for um, future topics? All right, let's move on to correspondence report. Any questions, comments? I didn't get into the office. Did anybody check if anything? Yeah, I did, Helen. There was no new, no new correspondence. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, I think it's really working that people uh, are sending us their questions by email or comments too. I think when I first got on the board, there were maybe like five correspondence items. Um, okay, minutes. Um, did everybody get the uh, amendments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yes. can I make a motion? Yes. I move that we approve the minutes of April 14th, 2020 as amended. Second. All in favor? Helen, I. Kathleen, I. Christina, I. Michael, I. And Janet, I. Motion passes unanimously. And now may I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn, Madam Chair. Helen second. Helen I. Kathleen I. <laughs> Christina I. Michael I. And Janet I. And I thank you for a three hour meeting. Oh. Good job, Janet. Good night, everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody. Good, uh, Joe, good job, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, Dan, whoever else is on. Yep, take care, everybody. Bye.